Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Greek Mythology, The Spiritual Dominator. Chapter 21. It seemed that he did not hear the implication of Ryan's words, and the expression of the Lord of Darkness did not change. He just paused and reached out to take the light spot in Ryan's hand. Different from the myths of later generations, when the spiritual Lord is born, there will be no life in this world without his permission. Because everything that has a soul must have a spirit, and anything that has a spirit does not need to have a soul, so the soul is contained in the spirit. In the original trajectory, even without the help of Iapetus, the Lord of Souls, natural spirits like nymphs could still be born in the world. But now without Ryan's permission, only the gods can become exceptions. God is different after all. The structure of the gods is very strange, and Ryan doesn't quite understand its inner mysteries. What about mine? Ms. Yi, who was watching from the sidelines, suddenly spoke. Ryan was a little surprised. He thought the couple had a close relationship, after all, there had never been a tragedy like Gaia's between them. Don't look at me like that, Nix noticed Ryan's surprise, and she explained with some dissatisfaction, he and I are not husband and wife. Those divine sons are the offspring of our own bodies. I thought the, prophet, knew everything. This time Ryan was really surprised. Whether it is the myths of later generations or the history witnessed by Ryan in this life, Lady Yi rarely appears in the world. His so-called understanding of Nyx was more of a guess. No wonder the two gods of the Dark Knight don't seem to care much about their children, and they have never received the treatment that the ancient gods deserved. It turns out that in their view, these so-called, descendants, are just the products of the original being inspired by the world. Ryan, who witnessed the process of personification of the primitive gods with his own eyes, knew very well that for the ancient gods who already had self-awareness, the ontology and themselves were really not equated. This is why even though Ryan often talks about an egg, he never cares about it. The three phases of the body and the incarnation of the personality cannot be equated. Nyx can indeed mobilize the power of destiny, but she herself cannot actually see the complete destiny. I'm really sorry, this was my oversight. Ignoring Nyx's sarcasm, Ryan used his spiritual power to condense thousands more soul embryos. He caused the embryos to float toward Lady Knight, but in addition, they had a glowing bobble in the middle. Through the changing veil, Nyx seemed to tug at the corner of her mouth, but she still reached out and took it. Never forget to snatch it from the hands of chaos, Ms. Yi said again, looking nothing like the original ancient god, you are really good at running a house. There is no other way. As long as the world respects the sovereignty of the gods over the priesthood, I will not make such a move. Ryan did not shy away from his purpose. He wanted to occupy the origin of some stars in front of the star gods. But this one was a bit special, so he hoped that Ms. Yi could hang it up herself. The current earth mother, the sea god, the future sun god, and even the priesthood of moon that I once controlled. Whenever I see them torn apart by the power of the world in the future, I will worry about escaping the control of the world. Fortunately, I succeeded. Substantial stars will still be born, but the concept of them being, stars, will be eliminated and they will become luminous celestial bodies corresponding to Kus, the god of lightless celestial bodies. In the present, there is not much difference between starlight and pure light, but in the future, Ryan will personally give them a difference. But I can hang it up later. Ms. Yi said bluntly, as long as the corresponding god is born, your theft will not be effective. Yes, if that's what you're going to do, then so be it. Ryan spread his hands and didn't care. Chaos's, uncertain fate, is already completely in the spiritual world. Not to mention the origin of fate absorbed during the birth process, the spiritual world and even Ryan itself are products that should not appear in fate. So if Nyx wants to wait for the corresponding god to be born, she probably won't be able to wait until the world is destroyed. Snort. Nyx was a little angry, and she didn't need to hide her emotions. On the side, the Lord of Darkness laughed a little, but he still tried to persuade him. Well, Nyx, since you are still here, I think your thoughts and mind should be the same. Let's get to the point, Lord of the Spirit World. We want to know how you seize the source of power from the hands of the world. No god wants to be controlled, it's just that they didn't know this option existed before. But Ryan's success undoubtedly allowed them to see the direction, which is why Nyx and Erebus are still here. They also want to follow suit and become gods beyond the control of the world. 
It's very simple. Faced with the Dark Lord's inquiry, Ryan said without any secrets. Have an origin beyond the control of the world, connect it with time, space and destiny, and throw yourself into it as the original material, and the world is born. The void that carries the world, the matter and spirituality that make up all things, plus destiny, these are the four pillars of the world. The body of a god can replace spirituality and matter to a certain extent, which is also the reason why the spiritual world has been successfully opened. The question is, how did you obtain the, origin beyond the control of the world? Nix was very dissatisfied with Ryan's explanation. What he said was complete nonsense, like, three steps to lock an elephant in the refrigerator. If she had such an origin, why would she ask him? Then there's nothing I can do about it. It's something I was born with. I was born earlier than you, and you know this. Faced with Ms. Yi's question, Ryan smiled and shook his head. Why do you think that is the original ancient god, my power is so weak? It can't be because the world doesn't like me, so why did it give birth to me? Nix was silent. She had not thought about this problem before. But now she also realized that in chaos, the powerful may not necessarily be ancient, but the ancient ones are mostly powerful. Erebus was also a little disappointed. If it was only related to the time of birth, then he really had no solution. Just like the original gods have a part of the world as their ontology, they can freely choose the degree of personalization, but the later new gods cannot do this anyway. So if Ryan's specialness is also because he was born early enough, then Erebus can only accept it. Then it looks like we're going to end up in vain today. Erebus sighed, he had no intention of stalking. After all, when Ryan successfully opens up the spiritual world, the other party is destined to become an existence on the same level as him. To the extent that Erebus is personified, he exists in his true form most of the time, so he doesn't want to do anything to Ryan. After all, Ryan did not steal the origin of darkness. Chaos belongs to everyone, but what belongs to Erebus is his own. This matter has nothing to do with him. Even before leaving, he planned to give a gift to ease his blocking of the door. Your Highness Ryan, I'm sorry to bother you today. To express my apology, I also have a gift for you. Erebus stretched out his hand, and a black mist appeared in his hand. The black mist is rolling and changing, but in the hands of the Lord of Darkness, there is no possibility of it escaping from its control. Ryan vaguely felt that this seemed to be an extreme emotion. These are the negative emotions of my nephew. They shake the very foundation of the world and make me give birth to many heirs. I was worrying about what to do with them, and now, it's yours. Taking over the black mist, Ryan felt the most intense emotion before the god king lost his throne. This is not only a negative emotion, but also a father's hatred for his son, and a king's murderous intention for rebellion. Simple emotion is not terrible, but when it was born at the moment when the god king changed hands, it became even more extraordinary. This kind of emotional power is indeed of no use to the Dark Lord. Maybe his children can use it, but Erebus obviously does not really regard them as his children. As for Ryan, when the spirit world transforms these emotions, he can use them to forge an artifact or derive a monster that can threaten the true god. When facing the twelve titans, they may have a different effect. Thank you for your gift in return. Putting away the black mist, Ryan said with a smile, this is really a pleasant meeting. Snort. In response, Ms. Yi snorted in response, and the Lord of Darkness responded with a smile. In any case, this conflict that might have broken out ended peacefully. Half an hour later, in the spiritual world. After chatting with the two ancient gods for a few more words, Ryan said goodbye to them one by one. If it weren't for the birth of the Son of God and the inspiration of the world, it would be rare for these two house gods to come out in a thousand years. Most of the time, they still exist in the form of ontology. After parting, Ryan took one step forward, passed through the seven layers of time and space barriers, and returned to the core of the spiritual world. As the master of the spiritual world, Ryan created the world in seven days, so the spiritual world was divided into seven levels by him from deep to shallow. The concept of the moon is also divided into seven, which are hung in the seven spiritual worlds. The moon in the shallow layer can be seen in the deep layer, but the deep scene cannot be seen in the shallow layer. So Ryan stood at the core of the spiritual world, with seven different spiritual moons hanging in the sky together. When originally designed, 
Lane ordered each moon to be two color. Can be either silvery white or their own color. In the future, he will give them different, symbols. However, the newborn spiritual world is not yet able to do this, so July at this time is all presented in the same tone. Looking around, the barrier between the seven spiritual worlds cannot block its owner's gaze. At this time, the interface was still very empty. Except for the outer two spiritual realms, which contained life, the inner five layers were empty. This is also the limitation of Ryan's current ability. He can only create relatively, orderly, life. The further out the layer is, the more stable the timing is, the further inside, the more chaotic the timing is. Therefore, except for the last group of creatures created, only the outer two spiritual realms can support the survival of ordinary spirits. Of course, as the core of the spiritual world, where Ryan lives, the order of this nameless mountain is absolutely stable. Its predecessor was the backbone of Ryan's divine body, which penetrated the seven spiritual realms at the level of time and space. This will also be the location of Ryan's future palace. After admiring his creation, Ryan made a chair at random. He sat on it and called to the creatures he had created. Lyanna. I'm here, your highness. As Ryan's voice fell, a girl with wings on her back responded to the creator's call. She has an appearance similar to that of a human, but her silver wings undoubtedly prove her extraordinary identity. In the spirit world, it should be that, she and, her sisters have powers similar to, regional gods, and can handle many things for Ryan. Lane calls them crystal, which translates as, transparent soul without deception. As holy creatures created on the sixth day, there are 18 of them in total, and Lyanna is their leader. According to Ryan's judgment, they are not demigods because they have the same immortal nature as true gods. But they are not true gods either, because they have no priesthood. They are a bit like the ocean goddesses of later generations. Although they are gods, they are not even considered to have weak divine power. Divine power level zero, this is their status. I have something I want you to do. Looking at the girl kneeling in front of him, Ryan said gently. Now, the projection outside the spiritual world is Pluto moon, and the light of the seven quarter moons shines on the underworld through the projection in turn. The concepts and origins of chaos and Pluto moon therefore converge to the spiritual world, but to it will take at least 2000 years to complete this process, and I can't wait that long. So I need someone who can operate the authority of Pluto Moon. She will take charge of this priesthood on my behalf, which will greatly speed up the gathering of concepts. Serving you is the meaning of my existence. Liana's response was unhesitating. Faced with her creator, she had no idea of rejection. Very good. Ryan nodded. He stretched out his hand, and the concept of Mingyu that had been enriched in the spiritual world came to him. Soon, a crystal-clear multi-faceted crystal appeared in his hand. With a finger of her right hand, the crystal instantly sank into Liana's body. The next moment, a power belonging to the true god surged out of her body. From today on, you are the goddess of the dark moon. Ryan announced calmly. As the words fell, Liana's divine power increased steadily, finally stopping at around divine power level 2. The current upper limit of the Pluto Moon Priesthood is Divine Power Level 5, but if Lyanna can gather all the origins related to Chaos, then with this Priesthood alone, she can enter the realm of Medium Divine Power. When that time comes, Ryan will naturally give her a helping hand and help her take a step further to become the true top god of Chaos. Divinity came to his eyes, and Ryan observed the process of Lyanna integrating the Priesthood. His behavior at this moment is similar to canonizing God, but not exactly the same. Lyanna was to him what the gods were to chaos. When this priesthood was canonized, not only did he not feel the decline in power, but he also accelerated the digestion of the source of chaos. This time he gained too much source power, and even now, the sources such as the dark moon and stars are still flowing towards the spirit world. According to Ryan's estimation, it would take at least thousands of years for him to completely digest and unify these powers. But now, with the canonization of the goddess of the moon, concepts related to the moon are directly digested by him at ten times the speed. Esther. I'm here, your highness. This is the second divine being created by him. This time Ryan didn't say much, but directly took out hundreds of light balls. At this time, he could sense that the star symbolizing, uncertain fate, 
had been hung up by Ms. Yi, and it was time for the remaining stars to appear. Strictly speaking, these stars are just projections, and their bodies are still in the spiritual world. Just as the light of the seven-quarter moon shines on the earth through the dark moon in the outside world, the stars in the spiritual world will shine in the sky of chaos along the connection with their projections. Until the true star god is born, they will continue to seize the source power of chaos, star, and strengthen themselves after being transformed in the spiritual world. If the star gods are born late enough, they may not need Ryan to devote his power. These illusory stars will be more powerful than the physical stars. With a slight finger, another multi-faceted crystal fell into Esther's body, and Ryan's voice also sounded. I order you to fill the night sky with stars and let starlight shine through the earth. From today on, you are the star spreader and the goddess of starlight. Divine power surged again, but this time, Esther could only barely become a weak divine power with level 1. Compared with Pluto Moon, the authority of Bi Yu Xing and Xing Guang is still a bit weak. But it didn't matter, Ryan felt that his digestion of the origin of the stars was also speeding up. Immediately afterwards, Ryan canonized 12 star gods in turn. Each of them has a star corresponding to the 12 months. Lane assigned the concept of months to these stars, as well as the plant growth and climate changes affected by different months. With the birth of 12-week divine powers, Ryan's digestion of the star source power further accelerated, and his integration of the power of time also accelerated. After waving their hands, the 14 new goddesses immediately retreated. Ryan did not continue to canonize gods because he could feel that the more powerful the priesthood was, the more powerful the priesthood was, and it also had requirements for the canonization object itself. As the first crystal he created, Lyanna was barely able to carry the incomplete Pluto moon. But order, history, spiritual plants, spiritual creatures, and even time, space, and life are not things that Ryan's creations can easily bear. Maybe Lyanna could stay in the position of true god for thousands of years, and she could slowly improve her nature and accept a stronger priesthood, but now, Ryan can only stop first. As the mind turns, time and space form a round mirror in front of the eyes. Through the mirror, Ryan saw the scenery on the earth at this time. It seems like a long time has passed, but in fact, only a little more than a day has passed since the opening of the spiritual world. At this time, under the sky, the war between Uranus and the Titans continued. The divine blood flows like a river on the ground, and the power of the Heavenly Father is no longer 30% of what it was at its peak. Although his momentum is still brave, the outcome of this dispute has been difficult to change. The end of an era. Whispering softly, Ryan pulled out a roll of canvas woven with moonlight. He mixed some paint with the blood of the god king that he had collected before and placed it on the round table next to the seat. Chaos's first painting, let's call it the death of the god king. As a god, Oranos cannot die. But as the oldest god king, today is the end of his destiny. Boom. Another punch, and Iapetus lay on the ground, unable to move. Although the power rising from the earth blocked most of the impact for him, his divine power was still too weak. With just the priesthood of speech he couldn't even take a casual blow from Uranus. Divine power level 7, which is completely unlike the power that an ancient titan should have. If the gods were not immortal, he would have been torn into pieces at the first moment of the war. Ah, help. Boom. Without looking, the god of speech knew that it was his equally weak sister, Nemozine, the god of language and writing. Language is as weak as speech. As for writing, the three lines of mottos on the oracle tablet are the real source of writing. They are the only weak divine powers on the battlefield, and the only value of their existence is to rely on their immortal divine bodies to take a few more punches from Father God for their brothers. As the offspring of a heavenly father and an earthly mother, they were born with weak divine powers. However, because of their weak priesthood, the two of them have remained almost unchanged for thousands of years. After all, Nemozine still had an object of hatred. She discovered the culprit behind her loss of memory, priesthood, the mysterious ancient god Ryan. But Iapetus, he could only accept his weak status. Tear. Struggling to get up, the god of speech watched as a leg of his original eldest brother Oceanus was torn off. This was the fourth time he had lost a limb. The divine power of the ocean is endless, and the power of the sky is not good at preventing recovery, so every time a limb is torn off, the lord of the ocean can quickly recover. 
but it didn't mean anything, it just made him suffer a few more times. Apart from Cronus, Oceanus, who threw the organs of his heavenly father into the sea with his own hands, attracted the greatest hatred. Even though he is powerful, he is still vulnerable. Obviously, the Lord of the Sky told him with facts that some gods are powerful because he barely has this level, and some gods are powerful because the last step is too difficult to cross. The earth cracked open, and the land at the edges turned into fragments and scattered across the sea, creating islands. The celestial bodies fell, and the lightless celestial bodies fell on the earth, bringing with them veins of minerals and creating valleys and hills. This war has lasted for seven days and seven nights. Except on the first day, there were inexplicably more glowing celestial bodies in the sky, and the entire world was constantly being destroyed. But finally, in a certain collision, Oceanus was surprised to find that although he was knocked away by God the Father, he did not seem to be more seriously injured. What? What? Two exclamations sounded at the same time. The Lord of the Oceans was amazed that he remained intact, while Oranos was furious at the decline of his strength. On the side, Cronus, who was constantly dealing with Father God with the help of the power of time and space, finally smiled. With most of his origin being swallowed up by the spirit world, he still couldn't hold on even if he borrowed power from the passing time with the help of Ray's power. The other titans were just traumatized, but he had very little of his true nature left. If he cannot obtain the position of God-King, the remaining space-time source power will not even allow him to maintain the power of medium divine power. In order to prevent his brothers from having bad thoughts, he did not even dare to show his weakness. Only his sister Rhea noticed some clues. But the two of them had always been close to each other in the Titans, so the goddess didn't know. Fortunately, fate was still on his side. Cronus defeated his father and persisted until the last moment. Ha 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 ha. You can't hold on any longer, my cruel father. Hidden behind time and space, Cronus's laughter spread across the earth. He made no secret of his joy. This was the only good news he had received recently. Really? Oranos sneered. He looked at his once youngest son, now his eldest son. He regretted not discovering his ambition in advance, but it was too late. The power of the gods is so long-lasting. Even if it takes seven years, I will not be exhausted, let alone seven days. Hearing this, the titans couldn't help but panic. They did not question Oranos's words, because this was the power of the gods. Even if they continue to be injured, they can still fight for several more months. As the lord of the sky who has far greater divine power than them and has always had the absolute upper hand, seven years is not an exaggeration. But can they persist for seven years? At this moment, the majesty of the heavenly father seemed to gain the upper hand in their hearts again, but the betrayal prevented them from begging for mercy from their father. After all, with Uranus's character, the titans who committed such a rebellious act would not be forgiven by him. But at this time, Cronus spoke, and his voice was even playful. If it is under normal circumstances, it is indeed as you said, my father god. The god of time and space had a mocking smile on his lips. Seven days had passed, and he finally realized what the transforming power his father was fighting against. He couldn't help but thank fate again. The gods are immortal, and he dare not shut his father, who symbolizes the sky, into the abyss. But as long as this power of transformation exists, Uranus will fall into eternal sleep. Unless, arrogantly, he is even willing to change his gender in order to survive in the world. But this was impossible. Cronus knew very well that his father would rather die than accept such humiliation. You are the original, father, Cronus smiled more and more wantonly, so you are different from other gods. When the symbol of your male god disappears, you can't use your divine power to reshape it. Because it is not only your organ, but also the representative of all your positive powers. Without it, there will no longer be any positive power in your body. Is that so, my dear father god? Or should I call you, dear mother goddess? Ha 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 ha. Amidst the laughter, Orano's face turned ugly for the first time. The other titans seemed to understand something and began to look at their father with strange eyes. Shut up, you rebellious one. You are the rebel. Cronus sneered, interrupting his father's scolding. He raised the knife and looked at his father. He was once so powerful, but now he only has verbal attacks left. Cronus felt a little emotional, but immediately felt the emptiness in his body, and he no longer hesitated. 
You betrayed the mother goddess and the will of chaos. Your atrocities should have been punished long ago. I, Cronus, the king of time and space, declare in the name of the future king of gods that the god of the sky is guilty and should be punished with eternal sleep. The sentence is eternal. The next moment, the distance seemed to not exist in front of him. He was obviously thousands of miles away from his heavenly father, but his sword pierced the heart of Oranos at the next moment. The lord of the sky had tried to block it, but this time, his invincible divine power failed to break the slowness of the power of time. Right in front of the gods, he was pierced by a scythe, and his blood spilled onto the earth. I win, father. Cronus said softly in a voice that only two people could hear. You won. Ha ha, maybe. Feeling the increasingly drastic changes in his body, Oranos knew that unless he was really willing to have his gender distorted by the world, he would have no choice but to sleep to resist the transformation. But at the last moment, the proud lord of the sky still did not bow his head. He looked at his child with cold eyes. His voice was also very soft, but every creature under the sky could hear it clearly. Cronus, my son, I want you to remember. You can win once, but you cannot win forever. Where everything begins, it will end. Yes, the prophecy is like this. It is like this for me and it will be like this for you. Watching Cronus' expression that suddenly became frightened and angry, Heavenly Father laughed heartily for the last time. I curse you, he said. You will be overthrown by your children just like me. The top of the sky is my destination. And Tartarus is your future. Cronus, I am waiting for you, my child. Dang clang. The scythe fell to the ground, but no one cared. Before them, the personified form of Oranos disappeared. He turned into an invisible air current, following the body he was born in, all the way up to an unfathomable height. The sky began to separate from the earth, and the two that were once often connected would never meet again. From then on, the distance between heaven and earth was immeasurable, and it was difficult for gods to predict its height. The story of the Lord of the Sky, the first god king of chaos, ends today. I will be the new king. With no expression on his face, Cronus picked up the fallen scythe and looked at his brother. Who is in favor and who is against? No one dared to look at Cronus at this moment. Even Hyperion and Oceanus, who had once had thoughts about the position of god-king, remained silent at this moment. Oranos's curse before leaving was clearly heard by the gods. If it were any other curse, they wouldn't take it to heart, but the one just now was different. Not only because of the object of the curse, but also because it reminded them of the warning given by the being who was considered the god of prophecy in the underworld hundreds of years ago. If you thrive by this, you will perish by this. Cronus used his son to seek his father and used swords to gain the throne. Does this also mean that he will be rebelled by his own children and lose his royal power by force? No one knows, but no one can guarantee that this won't happen. You must know that the position of God King of the Heavenly Father was given by the world, so simple force cannot replace him. But if Cronus becomes the God King, the throne gained through strength will no longer be endorsed by the world. But no matter what, time does not stop because of the silence of the gods. When no god in the world raised any objection to Cronus' position as the god king, power began to shift to him. Since there is no orthodox god king recognized by the world, a leader recognized by the gods is barely feasible. If no one challenges Cronus within 500 years, he will be the second generation god king of chaos. During this period, although he could not fully enjoy the authority of the god king, the powerful power had begun to be transferred to him. Children, you have won. In the silence, the scarred earth mother came from a distance. In previous battles, she had suffered no less injuries than her own children. It's just that she didn't appear on the frontal battlefield, but constantly mobilized the power of the earth to block the pressing sky. She also heard the curse just now, but she still acted like she didn't hear it. At such a moment, she didn't want to worry about the unknown future. Hearing this, all the gods reacted. They no longer had a sullen face, but began to celebrate the victory and Cronus's ascension to the throne. No matter what they thought in their hearts, facing Cronus, the strongest among the titans and holding a high-level artifact, they all expressed their recognition of his position as the god-king. You're right, mother. We should have a banquet to celebrate today's victory. Listening to the congratulations of the gods, Cronus forced a smile and said to the titans. But I think we should deal with one more thing first, Cronus. 
Suddenly, Nemozine on the side spoke. There was still blood all over her body, and the wound slowly healed under the influence of divine power. She came from a pothole in the distance that she had made herself. But at this moment, Nemozine seemed to have forgotten the pain. She looked at her former brother and current eldest brother with anger on her face. That god of prophecy, that thief. He stole my memory priesthood. You all felt it. At the beginning of the battle, chaos consciousness revealed his disguise. He is the god of spirituality, and he did things that made the world angry. We should punish him, she said. In Hades, where the consciousness of the world informs the gods. Yes, before celebrating victory, we should punish a sinner. Iopetus also supported. He thought everyone would think so. After all, it was Ryan's prophecy that made everyone suffer. But unexpectedly, no one answered his words after him, and everyone looked a little embarrassed. Ahem, my brother. Hyperion said, the consciousness of the world only appeared seven days ago. Even if we punish him now, we will not get a reward. Yes, Chaos's consciousness is always so rigid. When his offense to the world is completed, the world's reward for him will be cancelled. Tesis also echoed. The eldest sister of the Titans rarely talks. But what about my priesthood? Nemozine was a little confused. Is there any need to discuss punishing a weak prophetic god? Even if there is no reward from the world, it would be better to simply use him to embody the majesty of the new divine court. I want him to be my god. The priesthood cannot be transferred, but it can be borrowed between the main god and the subordinate god for a long time. The corners of Cronus' mouth twitched. The priesthood cannot be transferred, which is what he thought at the beginning. But he is not as simple as we thought, Nemozine. The lord of the ocean seemed not to want to beat around the bush. He said directly to his sister, Just seven days ago, when we were fighting Father God, the two people from the land of eternal night went to Hades. The divine power of the two of you is too weak, so you cannot sense it. On the previous god's birthday, the two primitive ancient gods used their origin to speed up the birth of the new god. It is obvious that they are looking for trouble with the spiritual god. Hearing this, Iapetus said no more. He understood what his brother meant. If the two primitive gods took action personally, or Ryan had been thrown into the abyss and accepted the punishment of the will of the world, then they would not be able to find anyone in the past. Either the other party used some method to make the two gods of the Dark Knight return without success. Then there is nothing they can do. Including Gaia, all the gods here now combined are not enough for the Lord of Darkness to defeat with one hand. After all, the opponent's power can compete with Uranus at his peak, and what they faced before was only the Heavenly Father whose power was greatly damaged, less than 30% to 50% of his peak power. That's it. Looking at his somewhat unwilling sister, Cronus didn't want to delay any longer. If possible, he wanted to attack the guy who swallowed his origin more than anyone else, but now he could only give up. Not to mention the other party's always mysterious style and the means to make the original god give in, the other party's prophecy alone made him sleepless. He understood his father now. Heavenly Father has treated the Titans as toys countless times, but he has never touched Ryan once. This is the deterrent brought by the mysterious fate. The other Titans didn't care. After all, they didn't ask Ryan for a prophecy, but Cronus was different. He began to regret, regretting why he asked Ryan about his future before. If he didn't know, at least he wouldn't be in the dilemma he is now. Let's go back to Odile's mountain. Mother's creations are always so delicious. His mood became a bit gloomy again, and the future god king who should have been in high spirits at this moment reluctantly made himself look happy, and then flew towards the sacred mountain first. Let's go, let's talk about the priesthood later. After looking at her sister, Rhea, the only one who was somewhat aware of Cronus' state, also said. Seeing everyone saying this, Nemozine had no choice but to bear it and chose to fly to the sacred mountain with the titans. She didn't dare to act on her own. Even the former Ryan was the god of time with level 9 divine power, but he could fight more than she, the god of language and letters with level 8 divine power. The gods left one after another. When the war between gods ended, the earth returned to peace. As time goes by, it slowly recovers from the damage it suffered. Half a day later, the banquet to celebrate the new king's accession to the throne began on Odile's mountain. Shuisha. In the spiritual world, 
Ryan put the last touch on his painting and looked at his work with satisfaction. The God King was pierced through the chest, but his expression did not look ferocious. He whispered softly, as if teaching principles to his children. Opposite him, the sword-wielding God of time and space had a face full of shock and anger, and the Titans had different expressions. At the bottom of the picture, Ryan also thoughtfully painted cracks in the Earth-like human faces, which are the Earth Mother who has been paying attention. The next moment, although chaos was very reluctant, the source of art and painting was still connected to the spiritual world. Unlike stars, stars have entities, so it is impossible for Ryan to swallow up all the star power of chaos. But now, if the god who symbolizes painting does not appear within 300 years, this god will never be born in chaos in the future. It cannot be said that there may be a god of painting, born who has superb painting skills but no creativity at all. After sensing the source of absorption, Ryan once again confirmed that it was difficult for him to absorb the source power related to matter. This was determined by his original origin. Unless one day in the future, he can stand in the realm above the great divine power and completely understand the root of all things. In addition to painting, art, and inspiration also came together. The former is stronger and can last for a thousand years before being sucked dry. As for the latter, pure inspiration and memory are the same as Ryan's. You are the first painting in the world, and the origin of painting should favor you. You are the first work of art in the world, and art regards you as its origin. You have recorded the end of the era, and history should also have you have one, he said. Then the source power in the spiritual world began to converge on the scroll. Not surprisingly, a thousand years later, when all the origins related to chaos are exhausted, an artifact will be born. With one step forward, Ryan's figure disappeared into the palace. The next moment, he appeared out of thin air in the hollow belly of the mountain at his feet. There is nothing superfluous here, only a small pool placed in the middle, with a spring spraying liquid that seems to be virtual yet solid. Ryan casually put death of the god king into the pool and let it breed on its own. The pool is the manifestation of the source of the spiritual world, and several other artifacts that have not yet been born are contained in it. Ryan looked towards the pool. Located around the spring are three transformed oracle stone slabs. Is this the creation artifact? In essence, it is a holy object that is equal to the great divine power. Even in the records of later generations, there are few such powerful creations in the world of chaos. With some emotion, Ryan knew that Gaia had not realized the true power of these three oracle tablets before. Unlike other artifacts, the oracle tablets are rough embryos, and only when they are used, will the power contained within them gradually be revealed. In the original history, Themis used it to write laws, so she was respected by the gods, and the jealous Hera never dared to offend her. The wise Métis created hydrology with the help of it, so her children were once the destined god kings. But now they are the property of the spirit world. Even if the last stone slab is not perfect yet, their power is still extraordinary. After seeing the slowly changing oracles, Ryan's eyes turned to their surroundings. Three inferior embryos are surrounding them, which are artifacts spontaneously conceived in the spiritual world. Time, space, and life. Unfortunately, the source power of space is still too little. After all, I have not obtained the corresponding priesthood before. Ryan shook his head. Although the three embryos with undetermined shapes were all powerful, the space one among them was obviously not as good as the other two, because the source of space in the spiritual world only came from Cronus. But even so, when it is born, it will at least be a high-level artifact, which is enough to make any god crazy. The other two, the part of time integrates the time origin and sequence of Cronus, as well as the past, present and future symbolized by history, calendar and prophecy. It is very close to the creation artifact, but still a little short of it. Lane estimated that it would take another one or two epochs of time to make up for its shortcomings. As for the embryo of life, it was conceived with most of the life source power taken from the life Aquarius. The complete life Aquarius will gradually become stronger with the prosperity of chaos. It should have become a creation artifact symbolizing the beginning of all things, but having lost most of its origin, it is destined to be the same as the one conceived in the spiritual world. It is also impossible to break through the last step. Unless in the future, they can gain power outside the realm of life. 
Apart from these, what is left in the pool are the same ordinary artifacts scattered in the corners as the newly placed scrolls. Some of them were conceived by the concept of moon, and some were born by the source of change. They are still powerful in their own areas, but the level of power is far worse than the previous ones. As for the lower level sub-artifacts, those kinds of products cast the day after tomorrow will never appear in the spiritual world at this time. Any true artifact contains the corresponding original power. Even powerful gods will not ignore their existence. If I hadn't opened up the spiritual world, I wouldn't have been able to obtain so many artifacts at once. After all, only the world can directly use source power to breed artifacts. However, our new god king is afraid that he would like to kill me. With a chuckle, Ryan looked at the embryo conceived by the source of time and space again, and then returned directly to the previous palace. There was nothing in the space-time mirror suspended in midair. At that moment, the Earth Mother and the Titans had returned to Mount Otis. Ryan did not continue to spy on their movements. After all, the battle was over, and the level 11 divine power was not enough to prevent his prying eyes from being discovered. But he knew without observation that the Titans were going to the sacred mountain to celebrate their achievements, and perhaps there was some distribution of rites involved. Although Cronus is the second generation of God Kings, he is also the generation of God Kings with the weakest divine power. Unlike Zeus, he did not have a series of heirs and lovers to consolidate the divine court for him. Unlike the Heavenly Father, he does not have the supreme power to suppress disobedience. Under his rule, chaos will fall into an era of, feudation, that lasts for tens of thousands of years. The Titans are unrivaled in their respective fields, and the third generation of gods will also be born during this period. Now, because of Ryan, Kronos, who was short of resources, could not do anything unnecessary. If nothing unexpected happens, he will first settle down and be the, Emperor of Joe. It would be at least a thousand years before he would try to do something. But he will send someone to find me, not only because of those two agreements, but also because he needs mortal things to strengthen his royal power. If you can't make the gods worship him, then it would be a good idea to let mortals who look like the gods respect him as king. What's more, creation itself is the behavior that chaos prefers. Smiling silently, Ryan actually looked forward to creating life. The spiritual world is ultimately the world of spiritual life, and chaos is the destination of all living things. The seed that gives a creature a soul. When the soul ages and dies, everything about it will return to the spiritual world. This is what Ryan wants, a way to continuously absorb the power of chaos. And faith. Feeling the meager power coming from the life in the spiritual world, Ryan looked a little strange. First, Cronus was, cut, and now Zeus also suffered. Regarding this kind of unexpected good thing, Ryan decisively said, if you can come, come more. On Odile's mountain, everything was just as Ryan expected. The banquet at Kalash lasted for three months. Except for Cronus, even Nemozine put aside the unhappiness in her heart and enjoyed the long-lost free time. They left everything behind, and for the first time in their lives, they had no one to restrain them. It's a pity that there is no, wine, in the world at this time, so the gods can't get drunk. Three months later, the banquet is coming to an end. As early as the first month passed, the Earth Mother had gone into hiding under the sacred mountain to recuperate her ravaged origin, so at this time only the Titan brothers were still having a banquet on the sacred mountain. But as time went by, the atmosphere became a little more subtle. It is undisputed that Cronus would become the God King. But the former god king regarded the gods as servants, which was unacceptable to the gods. Just because Uranus can do it, doesn't mean Cronus can do it too. He did not have the power of the heavenly father, so the titans could not help but have their own little thoughts. Especially Oceanus and Hyperion, one of them is the original eldest son, and the other holds the powerful sun priesthood. Even if they cannot become god kings, they still want to become, kings, in their own fields. Finally, in the delicate atmosphere, Oceanus was the first to get up. He looked at his former younger brother, now his, brother. Because of his sudden behavior, the Titans all paid attention to him. Seeing this, Cronus remained calm, but his gloomy mood added a bit of panic. Now is no longer the time to fight before. The power that Rhea helped him borrow from the, past, has been lost, and the power of the god-king has just been gathered. Now, 
His power is weaker than ever. If he fought with someone at this time, he would have to seek Ray's help, but this would only further expose his problems. My brother, do you have anything to say to me? On such a celebratory day, I will give your request serious consideration. Cronus tried his best to act gentle and dignified. He didn't even call his former eldest brother, younger brother. You are worrying too much, Cronus, I am not here to oppose you. The Lord of the Ocean shook his head. He could feel that something was wrong with Cronus' mood, but he didn't think that the other person was afraid of him. In his mind, Cronus just didn't want to openly confront him. After all, as the Lord of the Outer Sea and the river around the world, even if Cronus is stronger than him, as long as he hides in the sea, the other party can't do anything to him. But he had no intention of challenging Cronus' throne. After all, even if the other party can't do anything to him, the other titans will never surrender to him. In fact, except for Rhea, who knew the inside story, the titans had already recognized Cronus' power. But recognition is recognition, they are not willing to bow their knees in front of the new god king as they serve the heavenly father. You have proven your strength, Cronus, I am no match for you. He said, I just want to say goodbye to you. After all, I may rarely come here again. I want to return to the sea, that's where I should be. With that said, Oceanus waved to his sister. Tesis hesitated for a moment, but looking at her brother, she walked forward together. I'll leave Mount Odiles to you. I'm going to be my uncle's neighbor. I wish you a speedy recovery, mother goddess. I also wish you eternal kingship, Cronus. After saying goodbye at last, Oceanus did not wait for a response, but picked up his sister and flew away from the sacred mountain. He was not afraid of Cronus becoming ruthless. He is not the father, and he does not have the power of one against many. If he dared to attack him, Oceanus believed that his brothers would not stand by and watch. Watching the Lord of the Ocean and the Goddess of Raw Water leave, Cronus's expression was a little stiff, but it soon returned to normal. At least it's not the worst outcome. Even if there is no lack of origin, he actually doesn't expect his brothers to bow to him. After trying to calm down, Cronus was about to say something to lighten the atmosphere, but Thea and Hyperion stood up immediately, making it difficult for him to maintain his expression. After God Lord Ocean left, he had realized that he could not make these brothers surrender. So he was prepared to give involuntarily, rather than being forced by the gods. But obviously, the sun god did not intend to give him this opportunity. Ha ha, my newly enthroned majesty, just like the eldest brother and eldest sister, we are also preparing to leave. After all, the sun is not as warm as the holy mountain. I still prefer it there. Hyperion couldn't help but feel a little happy when he looked at his, former brother, who looked a little ugly. You have done all your tricks and deceived your father from the beginning, but so what? Even if you sit on the throne of God King, no one will really surrender to you. I think you won't force us to stay with you like my father once did. Hyperion said with a smile, as if he really respected the god king in front of him. That kind of cruel behavior is not what a god king should do. Of course, you are right. Cronus said coldly. Among the brothers, Hyperion has always been the most ambitious. Perhaps due to the influence of the priesthood, the son is born with a thirst for power. Then go back to your son. Since you like it there so much, just stay up there forever. Ha ha, of course. As the center of the starry sky, I should stay there. With a chuckle, Hyperion didn't take the god king's words seriously. The earth belongs to the mother goddess and the mountain god, the ocean belongs to the two sea gods, and the starry sky belongs to him. He was curious, what was left of Cronus as the god king. Let's go, Thea. I wish you a speedy recovery, mother. And I wish you eternal kingship, my dear brother. The sun god left with the god of light and vision, and the mountain suddenly became quite empty. Seeing this, the remaining titans looked at each other. They finally stood up one by one and said goodbye to Cronus. Phoebe and Kuz went to the sky together. As the gods of celestial bodies and light bodies, they would be neighbors with Hyperion. Themis did not leave explicitly, but she said she wanted to go to the earth to walk around. After all, she had been restrained on the sacred mountain for too long. Nemozine still held a grudge against Ryan, and she wanted to try to visit Lady Knight to find out what happened to Ryan. She didn't dare to go directly to the underworld to confirm. 
After all, she knew very well how weak her power was. In the end, only Rhea, Cleos and Iapetus remained. The weather was erratic, so Cleos stayed here and used the sacred mountain as his foothold. Rhea has always been close to Cronus under the influence of authority, so she doesn't plan to leave. As for Iapetus, he simply felt that he was too weak and simply stayed on the mountain. You are welcome to stay. I am not a father. You can do whatever you want here. After forcing a smile, Cronus didn't care if his frustration was noticed. Today's events have disgraced the new king, but there is nothing he can do about it. You just need time, Cronus. Rhea comforted her brother. It will be different when you fully control the power of the god king. I will work with you. Even if you are not as good as your father and mother, you can gradually establish your own kingship. Yes, you're right, Rhea. At least you're always by my side. Feeling somewhat relieved, Cronus arranged a place for Cleos and Iapetus to stay. When he was alone, he stood on the top of Odile's mountain, overlooking the earth. Under the night sky, the stars were dotted, and there was no sound on the empty land. In any case, the old era has passed and the new era has arrived. At least, he is the god king now. Three hundred years have passed since the god king changed his throne and the gods left. In the past three hundred years, like a shackles being opened, visions of the birth of gods flashed through the world more than once, and the origin of chaos also expanded. On the sea, after the heavenly father slept forever in the highest place, the earth mother gave birth to five children with her second son, the original sea god Pontos. They are Nerus, the friend of the sea. The wonder of the sea, Teomas. The wrath of the sea, Forces. The danger of the sea, Quechuo. The power of the sea, Eurybia. After the birth of the five ocean gods, Pontos became much more active. He no longer sinks alone at the bottom of the sea, but often swims near the sea, and occasionally sets foot on land to meet Mother Earth. In terms of power, due to the birth of the air, Pontos' priesthood was partially divided. But with the birth of these gods, the concept of the sea expanded further. Between increases and decreases, the original Poseidon is still a powerful divine power with level 17. Also on the sea, Oceanus, the god of the ocean, and Tesis, the goddess of raw water, also gave birth to a number of children. There are currently hundreds of them, and most of the sons of gods are river gods, collectively known as Potamos. The goddess represents a stream, river, pool, lake or sea, or even an underground water body. Most of them are not real gods, but like crystal created by Ryan, they are regional gods with, divine power level zero feet. Although he is as immortal as a god, his power is far inferior to that of a true god. Of course, there is also a true god among the ocean goddesses called Oceanides. The most well-known ones at present are the eldest sister of the ocean goddess, the goddess of oaths, Styx, and her sister, the goddess of fame, Clemene. From then on, the priesthood of the oath was delegated to the world, and chaos no longer responded to the oath of the gods. However, correspondingly, the price of swearing to the Styx river was much smaller than originally. Different from the excitement on the sea, on the earth and in the sky, except for Uriah, the god of mountains, who alone gave birth to some unknown mountain gods, only the eldest daughter of Kuz and Phoebe was born. Her name was Leto, the goddess of protection and lactation. Lane paid some attention to this, after all, her future children would be famous for generations to come. But all this has nothing to do with the lord of the spirit world. For 300 years, Ryan has been absorbing and digesting the original power day and night. The volume of the spiritual world has covered the entire underworld, and has even begun to spread towards the ground. He thought that this boring life would continue for hundreds of years, but on this day, an unexpected visitor made Ryan stop his actions. Through the projection of the spiritual world into the material world, Ryan could clearly see that the Titans and the goddess of justice and law, Themis, were there. Reaching out his hand and touching his eyes, time and space fluctuated. Under Ryan's power, the past and the ever-changing future kept flashing before his eyes. Soon, he knew Themis's purpose. Lyanna, go and bring her to me. Ryan said softly. As you command, your highness. Themis has been wandering the earth for 300 years since leaving Mount Otis. Chaos in this world is very similar to the one in myth, but there are also many differences. 
Not to mention the ocean, the area of the Earth alone is more than a hundred times larger than the Mediterranean area on the Earth, but the environment in most places seems wild and dangerous. And with the rise of the world's origin, the area of chaos is also continuing to increase. By the time of Zeus, no one knew how vast the Earth would be. However, although the world is getting bigger, there are also many problems that come with it. In the process of Themis measuring the Earth with her legs, she discovered various irregularities in the laws more than once. The world should be in order, but in those special places, the rules of everything are reversed. The water flows from low to high, and the looping space that keeps circling once you step into it makes people feel the cold fire. As the god of justice and law, Themis can hardly tolerate their existence. She tried to use the authority of the law to correct them, and the results were gratifying. She did put the chaotic rules back on track. But as time went by, the goddess found that she was just doing useless work. This phenomenon of disordered laws is a manifestation of the original chaos of the world's rules and loopholes left over from the beginning of creation. They are born and die every moment. No matter how many she kills, there will always be another one waiting for her. As long as the source of chaos remains in the laws of this world, this situation cannot be ended. I need to create a code of law. I want to write the correct order on it and let the world see what I want to say, so that the laws of this world will solve these problems by themselves. After receiving inspiration from the priesthood, Themis went to see Mother Earth. She heard that Gaia possessed three magical tablets that had existed since the creation of chaos. But unfortunately, the Earth Mother told her that thousands of years ago, the Oracle Tablet was handed over to the current spiritual god as a bet. So in order to complete her idea, Themis came to the underworld where Ryan last appeared. However, in the next six months, Themis searched the underworld, but there was still no trace of Ryan. There is only the dark moon in the sky, which seems to be the transformation of his former creation. Finally, she came to the dark moon, hoping that its owner could hear her appeal. Your Highness Ryan, I'm here to visit you. I hope you can meet me. Standing in front of the dark moon, Themis said helplessly. However, the next moment, Themis immediately stepped back and stared ahead vigilantly. A ripple in the space flashed through, and the spiritual aura seeped out. The girl in black robe with wings on her back appeared silently in front of Themis. Before that, she was not aware of her existence at all. She had never seen him before, but there was no doubt that this strange being exuded the aura of Ming Yu. And the most important thing is that in Themis's perception, the other party is obviously a true god, but she has never felt the fluctuation of the other party's god's birth. Lady Themis. The strange god spoke. Although Lady Justice did not know the other party, the other party was obviously familiar with her. Coming at your request for a meeting, madam, my lord has invited me. Host. Themis was a little surprised. She came to visit the god of spirituality, but the goddess in front of her called Ryan her lord. Even the former heavenly father, although he essentially enslaved the gods, never allowed them to call themselves slaves. Because they are both gods recognized by heaven and earth, the incarnation of the law of chaos, belittling the other party is tantamount to belittling oneself. Please come with me. Without answering Lady Justice's doubts, Lyanna turned around, and a transparent portal appeared in front of the two of them. The brows furrowed slightly, but Themis did not hesitate. As an immortal god, only Tartarus can trap them in chaos now. Obviously, she did not think that the strange space in front of her had the power comparable to the abyss. And although she was not sure, Themis guessed that the unknown space in front of her and the goddess who claimed to be a servant were probably the aftermath of the world's wrath on that day 300 years ago. Maybe soon, she will know the reason for everything. What should I call you, goddess of the underworld? Following the black-robed girl across the portal, Themis was not busy looking around, but asked the name of the strange god. In the narrow, circle of gods in chaos, a god she had never seen suddenly appeared, which inevitably made her a little curious. The Lord named me Lyanna. The girl's voice was very soft, but when it came to her ears, it gave off a majestic feeling. Themis knew that this was the influence of the Pluto Moon priesthood. In today's underworld, apart from Styx, the goddess of oaths who appeared recently, there are only a few descendants of the twin gods of night who occasionally appear in the world. But Styx had just been born, and the six children of the Lord of Darkness who were in charge of misfortune, destruction, decay, 
sorrow, deception, and lust were not powerful. Invisibly, Ming Yu was the master of Hades. Even in later generations, the original goddesses of Ming Yu and Cha Lu became the Yajun of the underworld, with authority second only to Hades. It can be seen from this that Ming Yu's position in the underworld is by no means ordinary. Therefore, under the influence of the priesthood, Liana's voice naturally has a sense of a king, just like the ocean god who now controls the sea. Hearing this, Themis nodded, but just after taking a few steps, she suddenly stopped again. Hearing that there was no movement behind her, Liana in front turned around and asked Ms. Justice with her eyes why she stopped. I'm so sorry. It's just your highness Liana. What is this? She just asked Liana's name, but when Themis looked around, she was surprised to find that she had arrived at a special place. Everything around her seemed to be no different from the Hades outside. If it hadn't suddenly turned into a black and white world, Themis would have thought she had never moved. Looking around, I saw a transparent creature that looked like a cover floating in the air around me. They were, floating, with many tentacles floating out from under the umbrella cover, as if they were absorbing something from the environment. Themis can feel that it may be the power called, spirituality. Although she has never seen it before, the goddess is very sure that the strange thing in front of her is indeed a kind of life, a kind of life that is different from the gods. There is no divinity in them, and simple time can leave traces on them, or even erase their existence. But there is no doubt that this wonderful life that is seen for the first time also has thinking, although it is still very shallow. This was what was most difficult for her to understand. At this moment, there is no non-god intelligent life in chaos, even if it is only primitive wisdom. This is a type of, ghost jellyfish, and it is the weakest, ghost jellyfish. Liana smiled slightly and explained aloud. In the first level of the spirit world, phantom world they are at the bottom of the food chain, but they can also reproduce easily. You see. Following the direction of Liana's finger, Themis noticed that there was a larger transparent creature not far away, which was splitting from the middle. The process of cracking was very slow and lasted for about 10 minutes. When the last adhesion was broken, the transparent creature was completely divided into two. Then, from the wounds where the left and right halves were broken, a large number of transparent silk threads came out of the body, forming the missing other half of the body. Both halves, shrank in size, but over time, they each grew the missing parts and became two smaller, complete beings. The master said this is, mitosis. Liana introduced seriously, this is a primitive and efficient way of reproduction. If the spiritual concentration is enough, they can double their size in half a day. Quote dot. Are there divisions? The new terminology refreshed Themis's worldview. As the Lord of Justice and Law, she has always been taciturn and has a serious face, unmoved by external objects. But today, she was really surprised by what she saw. It's mitosis. Liana corrected. Didn't you see the spiritual threads that emerged when they derived their bodies? The Goddess of Justice was silent. She didn't know what to say. Let's go. Seeing that Themis had no more questions, Liana waved her hand, and another light door appeared in front of her. Themis could clearly feel that the power called, spirituality, by the other party was extremely strong behind the light door, more than ten times stronger than the, first level of spiritual world, where she was at this time. This is the gateway to the second level of the spiritual world, the psychic world also known as the, true spiritual world. Originally, only a few places in each spiritual world were connected to each other, but the barriers between the first three spiritual worlds it is deliberately set up to make it easier to break through, and since you are an invited guest, we will take the fast track directly. Following Liana through the light door again, Themis was about to express her understanding. The next moment, she was shocked again by the scene in front of her. In the first level of the spiritual world, although everything was turned into, black and white, and although the strange, wandering jellyfish, and mitosis, were encountered as soon as they entered, these were still within the scope of Themis's understanding. It is nothing more than a special creation. It is said that the goddess of spirituality, Mother Earth, borrowed the base of life to give birth to new life besides plants. It is not surprising. But what appeared in front of Themis at this time was a scene she had never seen before. Two silvery white quarter moons hang in the sky, and there are many kinds of winged lives flying and chasing in the sky. 
The earth is covered with all kinds of strange plants that exude a spiritual atmosphere, and at least ten kinds of new life with fur or phosphorus are walking around on the ground. Not far away, about a thousand meters away, a small lake stood there. Many scaly creatures swim in it, and at the bottom of the lake, there is a strange creature that is constantly opening and closing, but with a pearl in the middle. Quote dot. Are these all the creations of His Highness Ryan? Looking at everything in front of her, Ms. Justice asked in disbelief. When Mother Earth created plants, she already thought it was an epic-making achievement. But seeing these special lives today, she suddenly felt the desolation of the land of chaos. Yes, the Lord created the world in seven days, and these are the spiritual beings created by the Lord in five or six days. Very satisfied with this, outside God's shock at the Creator's power, Lyanna explained with a smile. After a moment of silence, Themis immediately said, Can I get closer and take a look at them? Of course, but, with a flick of her right hand, Lyanna summoned a door of light for the third time. This time, Themis felt no presence from behind the door. It seems like you plan to stay here for a while, so we can't go up one level at a time. I'll wait for you here. In a moment, we will go directly to the seventh level of the spiritual world, the Palace of the Lord. At that time, you can state to the Lord why you are here. Then she remembered that she was actually here to borrow the oracle tablet, but Themis hesitated for a moment and walked towards the group of spiritual beings. She was very interested in such strange, non-godlike beings with their own thoughts. Liana's name is actually derived from Diana, which comes from Latin and is translated as, Holy Moon Goddess. However, Princess Diana was more famous, so she changed her name to Lyanna in order to prevent drama. Likewise with Esther, which in Hebrew means star. Half a day later, some things were still unfinished, but Themis returned to where Lyanna was. She has kept the owner here waiting for too long. Although strictly speaking, Kyosi's current, etiquette, has not yet been perfected, but she still feels that it is not good to do so. How was the harvest? Lyanna asked with a smile. Eye opener. In half a day, Themis traveled thousands of miles around the land and saw thousands of strange forms of spiritual life. Some of them feed on plants, some feed on other life forms, and some feed on certain concepts, which the goddess has never seen before. In comparison, her weird looking brothers are not that strange. During the observation, Themis tried to stop the fight between different lives, but later she gradually understood. Mortal objects and gods are different. Food is enjoyment for the gods, but it is a necessity for them. The goddess saw more than once that beings in the spirit world were fighting each other in order to compete for food, and she also saw the unique fighting methods of beings in the spirit world. Their strength is weak, but their fighting skills are primitive and fierce. Unlike the gods who blindly use authority and divine power to fight, beings in the spiritual world also know how to test, trap and disguise. I will mention this to Cronus when I get back. The agreement between the Mother Goddess and His Highness Ryan remains for 700 years. When the Life Aquarius returns to the Mother Goddess as promised, we should also borrow this artifact to create life on the Earth. Single quote. Following Lyanna through the light door, Themis made a decision in her heart. Compared to the empty and lonely world of chaos now, the spiritual world gave her a more vibrant feeling. Um. After passing through the illusory portal, the next moment, the aura of source power that hit her face instantly stopped Themis thinking. Looking around, the goddess found herself on top of a bottomless mountain peak. Seven quarter moons hang in the sky, and the six layers of virtual and real interface are penetrated by mountain peaks. Standing on the mountain, although she couldn't see the specific appearance of those interfaces, Themis still felt like she had the world under her feet. Sinea, or Nialas, this is the name of the sacred mountain translated as, the beginning of the moon, and, the source of spirituality. When she landed here, this information was instantly, understood, by the goddess. And in the dark, she felt that there was some kind of power that was very similar to the origin of her priesthood, swallowing and flowing in the sacred mountain, and slowly changing its nature. If His Highness Ryan started this, it would be a great feat. Taking a deep breath, Goddess of Justice sincerely praised her. Create interfaces and create creatures. At least with Themis's divine power, she didn't know how to realize it. Of course it's a great feat. Lyanna said matter-of-factly. 
The Master's name has not been spread in the world now, but one day, they will know the Lord's supreme power. Smiling politely, although she was shocked by the scene before her, Themis still felt that this was the reason for her special authority. The gods are absolute in their respective fields, just like the goddess of agriculture in later generations who can stop all things from happening again. However, without the corresponding authority, even a being like Uranus cannot change this result simply by relying on power. Themis didn't know what kind of priesthood, spirituality, was, but thinking about everything in front of her, it was probably the absolute embodiment of this priesthood. Following Lyanna, she continued to walk forward. Under her feet were steps paved with unknown materials. The various strange man-made objects on both sides of the road dazzled the goddess. The location opposite the light gate is not at the top of the mountain, but at a slightly lower part. After all, although it could be done, Lyanna would not open the portal directly to Ryan's palace. However, Themis did not feel that she was being slighted. On the contrary, she was observing the surrounding landscape with interest. Everything in front of her was a novel scenery that she had seen for the first time. This more, civilized, product was naturally in line with the higher position of the law priesthood and the order priesthood. Themis had already made up her mind to do the same thing on Mount Ordals. Time passed slowly. Although flying to Mount Sinea was prohibited, the two of them were not far from the top of the mountain. So soon, Themis arrived in front of the palace under the leadership of Lyanna. The sight of Themis was once again dazzled by the majestic man-made creations that she had never seen before. Compared with the overwhelming presence of the gods of chaos at this time, this kind of creation that looked very orderly and civilized was undoubtedly very popular with the goddess. The buildings are not densely packed, and each one has a different style and beauty. Although Themis could only see a few nearby ones, she still noted their styles one by one. This is where the gods should live. The goddess thought secretly. This is it, the temple of Lopez, where the master welcomes guests. Pointing to the magnificent hall in front of her, Lyanna smiled slightly and then said goodbye. I have completed the work of leading the way. Next, it is your meeting with the Lord. I. Unexpectedly, Lyanna was about to leave just as she reached the door. Themis was just about to persuade her to stay, but she saw the black-robed goddess smiling at her and then taking a step back slightly. In one step, just like when she first appeared, she disappeared without a trace. But this time Themis saw some clues. The other party's movement seemed to have relied on the power of time and space in the spiritual world, and he came to different levels of the spiritual world in an instant. Even if they didn't move, when the two were separated by a layer of world, she would naturally not be able to detect the other's existence. Seeing this, Themis couldn't help but think of the first spiritual world that was exactly the same as the underworld, phantom world. Maybe Lyanna had actually been standing beside her before, standing in the dark moon, but she was unaware of it because she couldn't see through the barrier between reality and the spiritual world. Can Cronus achieve this level of space-time power? Single quote. After thinking for a moment, Themis shook her head. She didn't think about it, but walked towards the main hall in front of her. Now that he has arrived at the door, he can't keep the owner waiting any longer. What's more, for a goddess who also wants to build a palace, the interior furnishings of the palace are also worthy of her study. Crossing the threshold, my eyes suddenly lit up. Compared with the illumination of the crescent moon, the palace looks brighter. Looking up, I saw the table, lamps, utensils, decorations, and the god in black who was getting up from his seat. Although Themis didn't know what civilization was yet, she felt that she liked everything she saw more than what she had experienced in the past. Welcome, ma'am. Lifting the cup lightly, facing the goddess of justice who walked up, Ryan said with a smile. Before we get down to business, please enjoy the dinner I prepared for you. Thank you for your hospitality, your highness Ryan. With a slight eyebrow raise, Themis took the floating cup and drank the red liquid in one gulp. This is wine. Single quote. The liquid seemed to contain memory, and when she drank it, Themis knew its name. To her, it was just an okay drink. But the goddess believed that her brothers would absolutely love this creation. Putting down the wine glass, Themis stepped forward and took a seat. She was also looking forward to the upcoming dinner party. What an unforgettable experience. 
In the temple of Lopez, Themis took the last sip of wine, and her fair cheeks turned a little red. Ordinary drinks are not enough to affect the gods, but obviously those brewed by Ryan using the authority of wine are not among them. If you are interested in it, you can take some back. Putting down the crystal clear wine glass, Ryan waved over dozens of barrels of brewed wine. Since we last said goodbye, Cronus and I may not have seen each other for a long time. These drinks are my belated gift to congratulate him on becoming the god king. I think he will like it. Then I will accept it for Cronus. Smiling apologetically, Themis didn't know about the grudge between Ryan and Cronus regarding the origin of time and space. She also thought that Ryan wanted to use this to remind Cronus not to forget their two previous agreements. In fact, the goddess of justice was also a little dissatisfied with her brother's delay in fulfilling his contract. In the past 300 years, she had passed by Odile's mountain several times and visited the Earth Mother who had regained some of her vitality. From the mouth of the Mother Goddess, she heard that Cronus had refused to go to the Abyss and release his six weird-looking brothers on the grounds that he had not yet fully controlled the authority of the God King. Mother Earth was very angry about this, but she was not the King of Gods after all, so she didn't know whether Cronus refused on purpose, or whether he was really far from the power Uranus once had. For this reason, Earth Mother left Mount Odiles and lived on the mainland near the Eastern Ocean all year round, staying with her second son. The five ocean gods who came to the world one after another were born during this period of time. Dear His Highness Ryan, thank you again for the dinner. But this time, I have something to ask for. After straightening her expression, Lady Justice, who had taken off her blindfold ribbon 300 years ago, looked directly at Ryan and said straight to the point. Smiling slightly, although it was already settled, Ryan still pretended not to know. Please tell me, madam. I am also curious as to what made you choose to come to my door after 300 years of travel. Hearing this, Themis's heart moved. Although he did not hide his traces, it was obvious that Ryan had an unknown way of observing the earth. However, the goddess of justice did not care about this. She directly stated her purpose. In the past 300 years, I have traveled to many places. In the present world of chaos, I found that the chaos and madness left over from the beginning of creation did not flow into Tartarus, but still existed in the laws, inside. I sought a solution, and finally, the priesthood of the law gave me a response. I need to formulate laws for the rules of this world, so that the laws can exclude chaos and madness. But what does this have to do with me? Ryan asked with a smile. Because I still need a piece of creation that can carry the laws. I want to use it to communicate with the world and write my laws into the roots of the world. Themis looked solemn, she could feel that her promotion to the priesthood should be based on this matter. As long as she can perfect the present world, the priesthood of the law will rise, enough to support her to become a powerful god with a divine power level of 18 or above. I visited the mother goddess and asked her for the oracle tablet, a mysterious creation that was born at the beginning of creation. But the mother goddess told me that it came to you as a bet thousands of years ago. I am taking the liberty to pay you a visit because I hope to borrow this artifact from you. With that said, Themis looked at Ryan. Yes, Ryan nodded as he met the goddess's gaze. It's in my hand. But now, it's no longer an oracle. He raised his hand slightly, and the next moment, with a burst of space fluctuations, a huge copper book appeared out of thin air in his hand. Without any cover up, the powerful aura of the creation code was instantly sensed by Themis. There is no doubt that this is a terrifying high-level artifact, and it even gives her a vague feeling of a higher level. It's different from what Mother Earth knows, Ms. Themis. Brushing the spine of the brass book with his right hand, Ryan said calmly, the nature of the oracle tablet is beyond her imagination, and the order contained in it is even close to most of Tartarus chaos. I used three stone slabs to create three artifacts, and what you see is the second of them. Frowning her brows, Themis knew that she would probably fail. The aura of the artifact in front of me is comparable to the Aquarius of life. No one would lend such an artifact out easily. But out of a desire to perfect her priesthood, she spoke anyway. If you wish, she said, I wonder what I would have to pay to borrow this artifact from you. She was ready to make a vow to do things for Ryan in the future. In fact, she had nothing else to give. But to her surprise, she got an unexpected answer from Ryan. Nothing is needed, he said, 
as long as you swear an oath to the spirit world and recognize my undisputed sovereignty over the creation code. Then it will be yours for the next 1000 years. Seeing the astonishment of the goddess in front of him, Ryan did not explain, but just handed over the book that seemed to be made of brass. He believed that the other party would not refuse. A little surprised, but just as Ryan thought, looking at the artifact handed to her, Themis hesitated for a moment, then reached out and took it. Gods and priests influence each other. Faced with the temptation of promotion to the priesthood, Themis could not refuse. Finally, we chatted for a few more words, and soon, with the borrowed artifact, the goddess of justice left the sacred mountain. After Ryan sent Themis away from the spirit world, he also went to a palace behind the sacred mountain of Sinea. That was his chamber, the temple of Aerith. Sitting on the couch, Ryan looked through the space-time mirror and watched Themis walking up to the ground with doubts and confusion. He knew that the other party was going to seek orders from the God King. In order to legislate for this world, the approval of the God King is also an indispensable part. After the legislation is enacted, this artifact will be initially perfected. After looking at the stone book held by the goddess in the mirror, Ryan whispered to himself. In his original plan, the creation code should be the recorder, perfecter, and founder of all rules and laws in the world. Laws can indeed be connected with spirituality, which is feasible. But the problem is that the goddess of law had already come to the world long before Ryan opened up the spiritual world. Ryan can absorb the star source of the world, and he has even absorbed almost all of it, but that is because the real star god has not yet been born, and Kus is only the god of the lightless celestial body, but the laws are different. The previous creation code relied entirely on the order origin of the oracle slate itself to be powerful. The part of it that belonged to law only came from time sequence. But as Themis legislates the world, the origin of chaos's law will increase a lot, and half of it will flow to the creation code that carries it. What Themis will get will only be the other half. After this incident, this powerful creation, which is close to a creation artifact when taken alone, can be considered completely mature. There are also the chaos and madness that were expelled by the law after the establishment of the code. Power is neither good nor bad, the important thing is to use it in the right place. Watching Themis who came to the surface and heading towards Mount Odiles, Ryan dispersed the space-time mirror. He could silently observe Themis, whose divine power was level 13, but that didn't mean he could observe the god king who was gradually taking his position. He doesn't need to worry about the next thing. For her own promotion, Ms. Justice will go all out to complete everything related to, legislation. With his mind sinking into the roots of the spiritual world, Ryan continued to digest different origins. This will be his main job for a long time to come. The two names of the sacred mountain and the two temples of the protagonist are all names borrowed from other places. By the way, I left a plot that I don't know if I will write in the future. As a name dropper, I have no choice but to borrow the wisdom of the ancients, even though they are from the west. On Mount Odiles. After obtaining the Code of Creation, from Ryan, Themis rushed towards the sacred mountain non-stop. Legislating for the world cannot be accomplished casually. A suitable priesthood, a sufficiently powerful carrier, and the authority of the God King, the custodian of the world, are all indispensable. However, Themis was not worried about her brother rejecting her request. After all, the power and position of the God King was not constant. Like Cronus, not to mention that the 500 years have not yet reached the time limit. Even if it does, his power as a God King will definitely not be comparable to that of his father. Despite Uranus's rebellious behavior, the fact that he, created life through intercourse, is his greatest achievement as a God King. What's more, Cronus is still a usurper, and the divine power he obtains will only be lower. Now that he can complete the task of, legislation, under his own rule, this new god king absolutely desires it. Three days later, Themis, who finally returned to the sacred mountain, immediately found her brother and told him her thoughts in detail. However, contrary to the expectations of the goddess of justice, although Cronus supported her legislation, he seemed to be more interested in the spiritual god. So you are saying that not only did he not make any demands of you, but he also promised to deal with the chaos and madness excluded by the law for you. Yes, I thought they would gather on the earth and form many dangerous Jedi. 
After all, I couldn't handle them. But since His Highness Ryan is interested in them, I agreed to hand them over to him. Some were confused as to what Cronus was focusing on, but Themis still answered. She guessed what Ryan must be up to, but she didn't care. It's just something she won't need, and keeping it will only cause trouble for herself. But Themis could see clearly that Cronus didn't think so. His resentment towards Ryan lasted for more than a day or two. Things are not that simple. There must be something you don't know. Ryan will definitely gain something in this process, he is not that kind of person. With a cold snort, Cronus looked a little unhappy. Three hundred years have passed. Although the power brought by his priesthood is insignificant, the power of the god king that has been condensed for the most part still gives him a powerful power of level 17. But even so, every time he thought of his lost origin, Cronus deeply regretted the decision he made. The level of divine power is the level of divine power, and the actual combat power is the actual combat power. Without most of the time and space priests, Cronus's strength is not as good as before, even if his divine power level is the same. What's more, if the time and space priesthood is still complete, his current divine power can be one level higher. In the field of powerful divine power, the gap between levels is not comparable to those with medium divine power. On the other side, looking at Cronus' expression, Themis clearly had some misunderstanding. She thought the other party was angry with Ryan's prediction. But the goddess of justice would not act out of anger, so she reminded. I know, Cronus. Because of his highness Ryan's prophecy, you and my brothers are dissatisfied with him. But you have to know that, at least for you, you not only took the initiative to ask for the prophecy from him, but you also owe him two requests. You swore to the world that you would complete them. When you fully inherit the throne of God King 200 years later, you can no longer delay it. Cronus was speechless. He once again mentally scolded Chaos for his rigid instincts. It is obvious that the spiritual god has done something that makes the world dissatisfied, and it is obvious that the other party has usurped his origin, but to the world, it is always right to do things and not people. Even if it instinctively resents Ryan for stealing his power, it will not give up its pledge to Cronus because of this. Quote dot. I will, but there are still 200 years, right? In the end, Cronus accepted the fact that he had to do things for Ryan, and he turned to ask another question. You said he opened up an interface called, Spirit World, and there are many special creatures in it. Yes. Themis nodded and said, I was just about to tell you. After he returns the, life base, I plan to visit the mother goddess and create some new life on the earth. Speaking of new lives, I've seen some. Cronus frowned slightly and recalled. About a hundred years ago, Kur, the god of destruction, represented their eight gods who have always lived in the underworld, and came to the sacred mountain to meet me. At that time, he was surrounded by some beings called, Eternal Night Nymphs. They were not gods, or even gods with power. According to him, they were the mother of night, given to him by the ancient god Nyx Waiter. Cronus actually glorified this process. Kur's purpose was not to represent the eight gods in meeting the god king at all but simply to show off in front of his new god king. In fact, most of the gods of chaos are still very emotional. The god king was still alone, but he was accompanied by his attendants. This greatly satisfied Kerr's vanity and made Cronus secretly angry. But he had no choice. After all, according to Kerr, he had a close relationship with his mother goddess, and the new god king would not dare to provoke a primitive god at this time. Of course, what Cronus didn't know was that the god of destruction also beautified the process of obtaining the night nymph. In his words, the two primitive ancient gods cared about them very much, but in fact, the two gods of the dark night had never met them. Erebus didn't care about the children who evolved from the original body at all, and Ms. Yi only gave them a few nymphs she created with soul embryos in name only. Among them, none of them were given divinity and transformed into demigods by Ms. Yi. It was not at all like what Kerr said, a testimony of the closeness between their mother and son. Didn't Mother of Night go to His Highness Ryan before? Themis speculated, maybe it was at that time that he and His Highness Nyx created new life together. Maybe, Cronus said, but since His Highness Nyx has accepted the existence of new life, I think there should be no problem with them. When the time comes, I will go with you to see the Mother Goddess. On the land of chaos, there should be some people who know how to respect the god king. Frowning slightly, Themis was a little dissatisfied. 
Ryan created life in his own interface, but Kronos' first reaction was, there might be something wrong with them. At least in her impression, Ryan didn't seem to have done anything to the Titans on his own initiative. You don't understand. Cronus shook his head, glanced at the face of the goddess of justice, and finally said nothing more. He didn't spread his wrong ideas around the world. If possible, he wished that no one would know about the shortcomings of his priesthood. That's it for now, Themis. By the time you've finished drafting the code, I will probably have taken control of the position of God King. By then, I will support your actions in the name of God King. That couldn't be better. After nodding, Lady Justice still didn't tell Cronus anything about Ryan. For her, legislation is the top priority right now. The previous 300 years were not enough for her to understand all the loopholes in the laws of the world. Now, with the assistance of the creation code, she can have more in-depth contact with the rules of this world. 500 years have passed since Themis left the Sacred Mountain. Time on chaos is so worthless, even after the first generation of humans appeared. It wasn't until at least the age of bronze men that the gods got used to counting time in terms of, years, instead of, hundreds. Three hundred years ago, on Mount Odiles, Cronus truly became the god king. Driven by the oath, he announced the new rules of the sun and moon in the name of the god king, and the few remaining concepts related to the moon completely flowed into the spiritual world. As expected, the future moon goddess will have no control over anything except a huge luminous celestial body of her own. Even the light emitted by the moon has no occult meaning except the name, moonlight. Regarding the second oath, Cronus also declared Ryan's sovereignty over the elements and his qualifications to weave the web to control them. The power of the elements therefore flows to the spiritual world, but except for the fire element the other elements are more superficial. Although there is no wind god yet, wind is subordinate to weather. Water, earth, light, darkness, etc. also have their respective gods, only fire does not have one yet. So no surprise, there will be a Vulcan in the future who cannot control the element of fire. And as Ryan fully accommodates the source power of fire element he can further touch the real fire and take this ownerless natural priesthood into his palms. Perhaps in the future, when the eldest daughter of the god king is born, Chaos will still give birth to the god of fire, but she will simply be a god in charge of the burning of matter. From then on, spiritual fire can harm matter, but material fire cannot touch spirit. Therefore, in the context of spirituality, Lane defines fire as the original one. In addition, during the past 500 years, many supernatural phenomena have appeared in Chaos. The most well-known among them is Helios, the original sun god and the eldest son of Hyperion. On the day when this new god was born, the whole world could see the sun becoming a thousand times more dazzling. The original priesthood of sun was split into two, with the older one returning to the ancient god Titan, and the younger one going to his children. Hyperion still represents the sun, but his eldest son represents the path of the sun. The original world of chaos did not have sunrise or sunset but now, there is dusk and dawn. With the division of priesthoods, Hyperion, who was already close to divine power level 18, was also severely weakened and could only barely maintain a powerful level of divine power. But the divine power can be maintained and the priesthood can be divided, but the sun cannot become two. So Helios had just been born and immediately became the sun god without a son. Without the celestial body corresponding to his priesthood, Helios still maintained the appearance of a young child even though he was born nearly a hundred years ago. He has the sun priesthood with divine level 15, but like Ryan at the beginning, he is just a weak true god with weak divine power. This family drama of the Titans made the gods of Chaos laugh a lot. In addition, the second daughter of Kuz and Phoebe, the meteor goddess Asteria, was born. There is an unstable celestial body in the sky of Chaos. But what surprised Kus was that his daughter only represented the celestial body itself. The light she emits does not even contain the slightest energy. She is obviously a kind of star. Excluding the small episodes in the sky, there are many gods born in the sea. Oceanus, in particular, was interested in having children. Hundreds more sons of gods and goddesses were born, many more rivers, lakes and springs appeared on the land, and the power of the ocean god lord began to expand. Although it is regarded as the river around the world, 
Oceanus actually controls the open sea and ocean currents. But as the number of children increased, friction began to arise between him and the ancient Poseidon. God's priesthood cannot be taken away, but this does not mean that those who have similar priesthood will not fight. Just like the land has been expanding, the oceans are actually getting bigger. The growing ocean has no innate ownership. Although the two sea gods have divided these sea areas equally before, it does not mean that they will always stay like this. The two ocean masters did not take action directly, but there were frequent conflicts between their children. But what dissatisfied God Lord Ocean was that although he had many heirs, there were only two true gods. Styx still lived in the underworld and did not come to serve his father at all. He had no choice but to continue to conceive children with Tesis, the goddess of raw water. In such an environment, the wisdom Métis, in later mythology, now the god of hydrology, was born. Congratulations, my brother, you are a true god again. Your god line is getting stronger and stronger. In a palace on the far sea, the god of weather congratulated his brother, whom he had not seen for a long time. Since Themis built her temple on Mount Otis, soon palaces of all sizes were spread across chaos. At least in terms of enjoyment, the gods of chaos learned quickly. You're coming soon, aren't you? Cleos, I heard that you and Eurybia are getting together. Counting the days, your first child will be born soon. Oceanus smiled lightly, but Oceanus didn't seem too enthusiastic. On the side, Cleos looked a little embarrassed. He knew very well that Oceanus was expressing his dissatisfaction with him. After all, everyone now knows that Lord Ocean has a conflict with his uncle. Although neither of them took action directly, there had been no contact between the two parties for hundreds of years. At this time, Cleos chose the youngest daughter of the ancient Poseidon, which naturally made him very dissatisfied. I know there is a conflict between you and Pontos, Cleos said a little helplessly, but there is no need for you to fight each other. So which side are you on? Oceanos asked bluntly, ignoring the weather god's words. Quote dot dot dot. I will stay on Mount Odiles. I don't want to fight with Eurybia's relatives, but I won't fight with you either. Saying this, Cleos actually knew very well that for him who had not yet become a powerful god, it would not be a good thing to take any side. It had better be, my brother. After giving Cleos a slightly warning look, Oceanos turned around, looked at the gods who came to attend the banquet, and announced loudly. To celebrate the birth of my daughter, Métis, the god of water, let us start celebrating. Everyone here is a friend of the ocean god system. After the words fell, the atmosphere that was slightly stiff due to the two titans finally became cheerful. The gods said their blessings and began to enjoy the wine at the banquet. As soon as this drink spread from the sacred mountain appeared, it became the favorite thing of the gods. No banquet can be without them. Rumor has it that they actually originated from a god in the underworld, but no one cares about its origin. The gods only care about one thing that is, wine, can make them enjoy it, and that is enough. In front of the palace, the gods were celebrating, but somewhere they didn't see, in the spiritual world, a figure came silently to the back of the ocean temple. When the spiritual world began to spread toward the earth, Ryan did not choose the mainland first, but chose the more remote ocean. At this time, he was standing on the first level of the spiritual world, looking at the young baby on the bed outside with a somewhat hesitant expression. She is Métis, who was originally in charge of strategy, wisdom, thought, and hydrology, the first wife of the third generation god King Zeus, and the mother of the goddess Athena. But now, she is just a weak baby in charge of hydrology. Unlike the children born to the original gods, the children of the second generation gods need to develop. They are no longer like their parents, who can reach adulthood in just half a day after birth. It can take as short as a few months or as long as it takes. Their growth rates are different. At the same time, the new gods no longer have inherently powerful powers. When the ancient titans were born, they all had at least weak divine powers, but with the exception of a very few, most of these new gods grew up slowly from divine power level 1. Now, this is the situation with Métis in front of Ryan. Her newborn skin was as smooth as milk, and her pair of black and translucent eyes looked nothing like a newborn. But there is no doubt that it will take at least several decades before she can become an adult god. This is not only because the third generation of gods should be like this, but also because her origin is not powerful. 
when she was born, wisdom, thoughts, and strategies were automatically scattered across the world like the memory of the past, leaving her with only hydrology. But unlike Nemozine, the third generation of gods was not born with knowledge, so she would not realize that she should have these powers. Métis Athena. Maybe I should take her. Whispering softly, Ryan wasn't worried about being discovered. Oceanus and Thesis are indeed very strong, but as long as he doesn't appear next to them, it will be difficult for the other party to detect him. This is the absolute nature of divine power. When Ryan hides in, history, and is covered by the spiritual world, no one discovers his existence even if he is separated by a palace. Forget it. Although my destiny has been changed, before Zeus ascends the throne, I still hope that this world will be a little more, familiar. And in the original trajectory, this goddess of wisdom doesn't seem to be that smart. Shaking his head, Ryan finally gave up his plan. Hurtus's potential, if he brought it back to the spiritual world and carefully cultivated it, would be enough to carry some powerful priesthood. For example, knowledge, its origin flows to the spiritual world every moment. Originally, the existence of the god of words could isolate Ryan from absorbing knowledge, to a certain extent, but unfortunately, the oracle tablet contained a more orthodox source of words. In this case, if there is one more candidate to take charge of the priesthood, it will not only speed up the absorption of the spiritual world, but also bring a powerful subordinate to Ryan in the future. But in the end, he gave up the idea. A goddess of wisdom, but she cannot even understand her own safety. What is the difference between this so-called wisdom and the prophecy of Prometheus? In contrast, perhaps her daughter is better suited to be the voice of wisdom. Now that he had made his decision, Ryan stretched out his hand, and three multifaceted crystals appeared silently in front of him. The spiritual world has just begun to absorb the origins of the three major priesthoods, but this does not affect Ryan's ability to condense their corresponding priesthoods. Although they are still very weak now, as the spiritual world absorbs all the scattered origins, they will return to their due height. He stretched out his hand and three crystals fell into the body of the baby girl in front of him. At the same time, Ryan's figure disappeared instantly. The next moment, Lord Ocean appeared directly next to the bed. He glanced left and right, but found nothing. The moment Ryan gave him the priesthood, he returned from, history, to the present. Oceanus immediately noticed something strange, but he failed to track Ryan's existence. What's wrong? After a while, Tesis also appeared here. The goddess was not in the temple before, but sensing her husband's sudden burst of divine power, she rushed back quickly. It's nothing, maybe it's my imagination. Shaking his head, Oceanus prepared to go back. But when his eyes glanced at his daughter, his eyes suddenly paused. Is this the breath of wisdom priesthood? Somewhat unsure, Oceanus picked up his daughter and felt the breath in her body carefully. But soon, he not only confirmed his previous induction, but also discovered strategy and thought. Métis was given other priesthoods by the world. Did you sense the aura of chaos just now? Tesis also noticed something strange about his daughter. However, chaos has never given any clergy to others other than gods. She instinctively thinks that this is a gift from the world. Maybe, but that's not important anymore. God Master Ocean was not sure, but he was indeed pleasantly surprised. Unlike Ponto's eugenics, he is synonymous with casting a wide net. Among the children, only Styx has the priesthood that allows her to achieve medium divine power. The remaining Clemene and Métis, Fame, and Hydrology make it difficult for them to even become weak divine powers. But now, with wisdom, strategy, and thought Métis is destined to become a powerful being like her eldest sister. At least moderate divine power, and in the distant future, it is even expected to be powerful, which is much more powerful than many ancient titans. My brother Iopetus once asked me for a wife. Although he did not ask for it, my daughter other than the true god is not enough to match his status. I originally intended to choose between Clemene and Métis, but now it seems that I don't need to choose. Oceanus sounded happy, and Thesis nodded in approval. Having more children, spreading the oceanic gods all over the world, and using in-laws to win over the gods was their plan from the beginning. The myths of later generations also prove his success. Unlike his brothers, apart from Rhea and Themis, Lord Ocean was the only ancient titan who still retained some power in the era of Zeus. 
I will talk to Clemine about this. As a goddess of fame, marrying a titan with a distinguished status is also in line with her priesthood, and she will be satisfied with it. As a good wife of Oceanus, Tesis took the initiative to accept this job. Okay, I hope she can give birth to a powerful god for my brother. In this way, we will have one more helper when we face my uncle in the future. Nodding to his wife, Oceanus stood up and headed to the front hall. His sudden departure must have caused a lot of speculation among the guests, but now, he can happily tell them the good news. From today on, the name of, Wisdom Métis, will surely resound across the sea, and no one can criticize themselves anymore with, only quantity, sticks is just an accident. Behind him, Tesis glanced at his daughter again, and then left the hall. She was patrolling the ocean currents, preparing to extract the essence from the sea area controlled by her husband, combine it with the priesthood, and give birth to an artifact. Although this primitive casting method is relatively ordinary and not as powerful as the Cyclops who have special talents in forging, it is still enough to serve as a symbol of the ocean god. Tethys is going to continue preparing for this. As for his daughter Métis, God is immortal and she does not need to be taken care of all the time. In the Ocean Temple, Ryan gave him the priesthood, and the next moment, he left the place with the help of the characteristics of the spiritual world. Except for the sacred mountain of Sinea, the time and space of the spiritual world becomes more and more chaotic the further in. Levels above three are already deep in the spiritual world. There, if you take one step forward, you may be thousands of miles away in reality. Although only the first two levels of the spiritual world are currently fully constructed, this does not affect Ryan's ability to use the characteristics of other levels. So in an instant, he came to the sea thousands of miles away. This is because the scope of the spiritual world in this world is too small. Otherwise, with the help of this method of movement named, Spirit World Shuttle, by Ryan, he could travel to both sides of the earth in 10 minutes. When creatures are born on the earth in the future, and my divine power has accumulated to level 16 or above, I can weaken the barrier between the surface of the spiritual world and the real world. At that time, beings with high natural inspiration can directly see the first level of the spiritual world. Some spiritual beings with deep obsessions or being respected by sacrifices can also stay in the shallower level of the spiritual world and survive in another way. Thinking secretly in his heart, Ryan looked back in the direction of Ocean Palace. It is rumored in later generations that a considerable part of Zeus's wisdom came from Métis, but now, Métis's priesthood was bestowed by Ryan. But I can't say for sure. Rather than saying that Zeus's wisdom comes from Métis, I believe that he just borrowed his name. How can it be so good to swallow a god and use her divine power? What's more, if you can deceive the goddess of wisdom, Zeus's rhetoric may not be inferior to Métis, wisdom. Shaking his head, Ryan followed the direction in his memory and walked to a place offshore. After working hard to digest the origin for 800 years in the spirit world, Ryan finally came out, but Ryan had no intention of going back immediately. At least, he was going to get something there. Arrive. Seven days later, after crossing the long sea, Ryan came to a special sea surface. There are no winds and waves here, and the sea is as quiet as death. But when the sun shines on it, it has a divine beauty. Not far away, a layer of blood foam exuding desire and hatred floated there. This is the source of all the changes in this sea area. Even Pontos himself is not willing to come here. Because this is where Orano's organs fell, which contains his hatred for the Titans and Pontos. In the future, Orenaes and Aphrodite will be born here. As the birthplace of the four gods, when the blood of the god king disappears, this place will also become a sacred sea. Who are you? This is the domain of the lord of the near sea. Strange gods, tell me your name. Suddenly, with a slightly weird tone, a half-snake, half-fish monster appeared. She looked directly at Ryan, who was not far away, with alert eyes, but she did not take action casually. Because the divine aura on the other person's body told her that he was at least a god with medium divine power. As one of the five children of Pontus, she, like her brother and husband Forces, is a half-god and half-monster being. Together, they gave birth to many sea monsters, the most famous of which were the three Grey Eye sisters. They appear as old women, but the three of them share one eye and one tooth. They are in charge of, viciousness, violence, and, terror, 
respectively, but they are not true gods, they are just quasi-gods with power and immortality, just like those ocean goddesses without priesthood. Kito, I know you are in danger of the sea. Ryan didn't look at her, let alone answer her question. Compared to Eurybia, the power of the sea, and Nerus, the friend of the sea, Sito and her brother were more like Cyclops and were disliked by the gods of chaos. There is no way, the god of chaos always cares about his face. But I don't know you, strange gods. This is a sea area that has been turned into a restricted area by God the Father. All the gods know this. Kito's expression became more and more sinister, and she was more severely affected by instinct than a normal god. It's not important, Ryan said, an interesting idea suddenly came to his mind. The important thing is, do you want to change your appearance? Get rid of your current appearance, or at least have an appearance that is recognized by the gods. Kechuo's increasingly ferocious face froze. Ryan's repeated incorrect answers made Sito, who was controlled by animal nature to a certain extent, a little angry. She originally planned to follow her instinct and attack Ryan, but the words that followed immediately made her regain her sense. She had declared more than once that she did not care about appearance, but when the banquet of the gods turned her away, only she knew what she thought. I want to. I mean, what should I do? The voice suddenly became softer, Ryan could hear it, although this, softness, was still harsh. Without giving away, Ryan pointed at the blood foam in front of him. Drink them, of course, only in small portions. If you dare to drink it all, you will only serve as the mother body and give birth to four new gods. But if you only drink a few sips, you may get unexpected gains. Kechuo hesitated. As the, danger of the sea, she knew very well that this was the most, dangerous, place in the sea, and the source of the danger was the blood. She didn't know if she should believe this strange god's words, but she was too eager to change. It's up to you whether you want to drink it or not, but this may be your only chance. Stretching out his hand, Ryan took a spoonful of blood from the blood in front of him, then his body flashed and disappeared silently on the sea. This was exactly why he came for this trip, but it was an accident that he met Kechuo. Etc. He quickly spoke out and watched Ryan disappear, Kido wanted him to speak more clearly. But Ryan obviously didn't have time to pay attention to her. He was just interested and reminded her casually, just for fun. Roaring angrily, but with a faint desire in his heart, Kido still focused on Shuemo. For a long time, a look of struggle appeared on her ferocious face, but in the end, Sito's desire for beauty defeated her instinct. She no longer cared about the danger of the blood in front of her and started to drink it in large gulps. As the blood entered her belly, her appearance did change. At a certain moment, she stopped drinking and looked at her own shadow on the sea. A beautiful black-haired goddess appeared there, the wildness in her eyes adding to her charm. But at this moment, Sido did not feel happy. Instead, he became jealous of those who were truly beautiful. She knows that now she is also a god of beauty. It's just that she is beauty in disguise, beauty in disguise. At the same time, she also understood under the influence of the priesthood that the gods who truly symbolized love and beauty would be born in these blood foam in the future, and her dressing up was meaningless in front of the other party, and could only become the green leaves that set off the flowers. Nothing is eternal. One day, I will become truly beauty. If not, then let them all die. As long as there is no one more beautiful than me, then I will still be synonymous with beauty. The voice was no longer hoarse, but the pleasant tone spoke cruel words. Kechua looked at the blood foam on the sea and swore secretly in his heart. The future god of love and beauty is her destined enemy. After staring for a long time, when the sun set, Kechua left here. According to the time in her memory, she rushed towards the palace of a god, where a party seemed to be held. The future is still far away, and now, she also wants to experience the feeling of other gods enjoying the banquet. This time, she won't be rejected. Ryan casually inspired an alternative beauty god, but Ryan didn't take it to heart. Sito actually had no sense of existence in later generations. Only her monster sons and daughters appeared in human epics, and were then used to highlight the great achievements of the demigod, heroes. As a monster, compared to Typhon, the king of demons, she can't even compare to Typhon's descendants. But now, as a god, 
Sido might leave some new traces in the history of chaos. Another 700 years have passed since Métis was born and Sido was reborn. The world never revolves around one person. Although Ryan has lived in seclusion for 700 years, it has not affected the prosperity of the world of chaos. 100 years after returning to the spiritual world, a bright moon once again hung in the sky of chaos, which had been dim for 900 years. That was the moon goddess Selene, the daughter of Hyperion and Thea. This goddess who should have been powerful in her original trajectory is extremely weak because she has lost all concepts related to the moon. Her limit is only weak divine power. This is also thanks to the fact that the moon is the largest luminous celestial body in the night sky. This incident made Hyperion very angry. He suppressed his son because the sun could not be divided into two. However, as his daughter, Selene was supposed to be his best helper in ruling the starry sky, but the result was a huge disappointment to him. For this reason, Hyperion hesitated for a long time, but he finally came to the underworld. After all, in his opinion, as long as he does not seek prophecy from Ryan and let himself be caught by fate, there is nothing to fear from the so-called spiritual god. The two gods of the Dark Knight who once retreated probably made the mistakes of two generations of god kings and tied themselves up because of the prophecy. So Hyperion searched the underworld. He tried to find Ryan and let him return the concept of moon. The sun god is not willing to cause trouble for a sister with whom he has a normal relationship, but it is different for a daughter who is expected to have powerful divine powers. But in the face of Hyperion's actions, Ryan didn't bother to pay attention. So after searching for several years, the sun god could only angrily release his power around the dark moon, but he couldn't touch the light body in front of him at all. After returning in vain, Hyperion approached Cronus again. He thought that Ryan relied on the god king's order to take away Selene's power. As long as Cronus cancelled this order, the concept of the moon would return to its original owner. But Cronus decisively rejected the other party. Not to mention that the previous ownership of you, was the oath he made to the world. Even if it was not, he would not look good on this brother who has always been at odds with him. What's more, others don't know, but Cronus knows it very well. Referring to his own origin of time and space, he knew that before the concept of moon gathered in the past, it may indeed have been controlled by Ryan because of the authority of the god king, but after it passed, there would be no return. Therefore, in order to cover up the truth of his original loss, Cronus was even less likely to agree to this rude request. Hyperion was furious after being rejected repeatedly, but feeling the increasingly powerful aura of the god king, he felt helpless. In the end, he had no choice but to return to the sky and vent his anger on the surroundings. So during that time, the sun in the sky released its power wantonly, and the temperature of the entire world rose accordingly. Fortunately, the earth at this time was basically filled with gods, so no disasters were caused. However, because of this incident, the third generation god of chaos also learned that in the underworld, there is another ancient god who controls the moon and spirituality, but he rarely comes out. A few years later, Astraeus and Eos were born. The former is the son of Eurybia, the god of weather and the power of the sea, and the god of the stars. The latter is Hyperion's second daughter, the goddess of the dawn. And unlike what was recorded in the myth, there was no rape scene this time. In other words, Ryan didn't think this myth had much authenticity. It was rumored that Eos was cursed by the goddess of love and beauty and could only fall in love with mortals, but judging from her subsequent actions, she did not look like a pure goddess. So just over a hundred years later, these two new gods came together spontaneously. They gave birth to the four great wind gods and many star gods, most of whom were quasi-gods without priesthood. There is only one exception among the star goddess, she is Estrella, the star of justice and the goddess of purity. Although she is not very powerful, as a true god, she is regarded as a leader by the star gods. The enemies, the wind gods, are much more powerful. They tore off part of the priesthood from their uncle, the weather god, and represented the winds in the four directions. They are Boreas, the North Wind God, Notos, the South Wind God, Eurolos, the East Wind God, and Zephyrus, the West Wind God. With their birth, the air currents of chaos became more changeable. At the same time, on the earth and in the ocean, the three goddesses of ash trees and the three goddesses of revenge were born one after another. They were transformed by the divine blood left by Uranus. 
The former was called Meliades and the latter was called Arenaes. Perhaps it was because Quito, the danger of the sea, once drank the divine blood of the three vengeful goddesses before they were born, so they regarded Quito as their eldest sister and stayed in the ocean with her. The three ash tree goddesses came to Odile's mountain to pay homage to the god king, and were taken with them by Rhea, who had become the god queen. On the other side, Iapetus on the sacred mountain also had his own son of god. He and his niece Clemene, the daughter of the ocean god, gave birth to three gods one after another, and they all became famous in later generations. The original god of strength, and later the sky supporter Atlas. The creator of bronze humanity, Prometheus, the fire thief, and Epimetheus, the dull one. Different from the weakness of his two brothers, Atlas has shown extraordinary divine power since the day he was born, and has the potential to become a powerful divine power. For this reason, the ocean god personally came to congratulate the birth of his nephew grandson, and blessed him to never be invaded by the ocean. Of course, while his brothers were working hard, the fertility-loving Oceanus himself was not idle either. Over the past 700 years, thousands of children have been born in the world of chaos, and rivers and lakes have begun to spread across the land. Most of them are regional gods, but there are still a few true gods. They are Urinum of the water and grass pasture, Perseus the goddess of boiling water, Pronoa the goddess of vision, Doris the goddess of gentleness, and Falula the goddess of healing. As their children increased, the conflict between Pontus and Oceanus became more intense. Several battles broke out among their children on the sea, but with no apparent results. However, anyone with a discerning eye can see that if it were not for the worry about the god king on the sacred mountain, perhaps a war would have broken out between the two sea gods. In addition, during the birth of many gods, something happened that left the gods scratching their heads. About a thousand years after Cronus ascended the throne, many mountain gods and river gods on the earth noticed that a ray of emerald green light flew out of the ground and headed towards the residence of the Earth Mother by the East Sea. After that, the land of chaos shook inexplicably for three years. It was the anger of Mother Earth, but it had no subsequent consequences. Later, the god King Cronus came to visit the Earth Mother and borrowed the vase of life but returned without success. It wasn't until the goddess of justice and the goddess Rhea came to ask for it together with him that they got what they wanted. But what disappoints the three titan gods is that is the source of life in chaos, the life Aquarius can indeed create living beings, but none of them have consciousness. In desperation, Themis had to give up the idea of creating life and continue her preparations. So hundreds of years passed, and the preparations that took 1,500 years came to an end. On this day, the god of justice and law finally stood on Mount Odiles and began to legislate for this world. Are you ready? On the top of the sacred mountain, in front of a group of palaces, Cronus asked. Although the legislation is not led by him, as the god king, he will also have a share of the world's rewards. Of course, what about your edict? Twelve hundred years of time have not left any trace on Themis. On the contrary, years of traveling have made her eyes calmer and sharper. She looked to Cronus and asked him for the last thing she needed to legislate. Use this, the scepter of the god king. My brother who dominates the outer sea is so powerful. In addition to the mountain gods of Uriah and the star gods in the sky, he has more descendants than the gods of the entire chaos. Cronus' voice was calm, and he didn't have any extra emotions when talking about Oceanus. His former eldest brother used the essence of the sea and the origin of the priesthood to forge a sea king scepter for himself to command the sea. So Cronus followed suit and forged a scepter of his own. But as soon as the sea king's scepter came out, thousands of ocean gods obeyed his orders. As for Cronus's divine king's decree, no one cares about it until now. If you can't get out of the sacred mountain, this is Cronus now. Even the earth has long been occupied by many river gods, lake gods, and mountain gods. In their eyes, where the god king ranks is basically a fact that goes without saying. It is not a good thing to follow others, Cronus. The gods will remember the first, but few will know the second. After taking the scepter inlaid with three-color jade, Themis reminded her brother. This was a sentence she heard from Lyanna, and it made sense to Lady Justice. For thousands of years, she has visited the spirit world frequently, and then replicated what she learned on Mount Otis. She didn't take it without telling her, because Ryan was happy to see it happen. 
Themis's behavior not only did not harm his interests, but also accelerated his absorption of the power related to chaos. Maybe. But the strongest one is also the first, isn't it? Cronus's voice is much more confident than it was hundreds of years ago. In other words, the growing power of the God King has given him this confidence, and he is already planning to do something. The God King inlaid three gems on the scepter, hoping that one day he could use it to command the sky, the earth and the ocean. On that day, maybe he will have the confidence to fight against the curse left by the Heavenly Father, or even the unspeakable fate. However, unlike Cronus, although Themis nodded in response to the God King's response, she was not very optimistic about her brother. Unless he can have power comparable to the original gods and become the true king of the gods, the strongest one, is just empty talk. But relying solely on the priesthood, Cronus couldn't do this at all. Sky has the potential for great divine power, because Heavenly Father is the incarnation of the sky. But Cronus, even if Themis didn't know about his lack of origin, originally he only occupied more than 30% of the origin of time and space in the current world. To become a true god-king, one must possess great power. But if he wants to have powerful power, Cronus can only rely on the power of the god-king. This is simply an endless cycle. In later generations, Zeus used his faith to successfully break the situation, but at this time, the second generation god-king did not have that condition. I'm going to start. Speaking softly, Themis delayed no longer. Everything was ready, and she couldn't wait. Cronus on the side heard this and quickly ducked away. When legislation begins, the entire world's rules will be gathered here. Except for the legislator himself, not even the primitive gods dare to directly contact this endless chain of order at this time. After all, the so-called, present world is actually the consciousness of chaos in the eyes of the gods. Including the laws and visions during the birth of God, they only occur in this world and do not affect other places. The truly complete chaos includes everything in the world, but the gods only come into contact with his orderly side. This part contains most of the sky, all of the earth, most of the oceans, and the core of Hades. Beyond the present world, there are the land of eternal night, the lightless realm, the bottomless abyss, the edge of the starry sky and the sea, and some dangerous places in the underworld. There, the chaotic part of chaos dominates, and the power of the gods will even be weakened there. Only those who touch the great divine power can not be affected by it. Seeing Cronus step away, Themis pursed her lips. She took a step forward and stood at the highest point of the sacred mountain. The next moment, the goddess of justice grasped the scepter of the god king tightly, and the vast divine power in her body began to surge. That is not only the power of her medium divine power, but also includes part of the divine king's authority temporarily given to her by the scepter. Under the dual effects of divine power and divine authority, part of chaos instinct, the laws of this world began to open the door to the goddess under the guidance of the priesthood of law. In an instant, Themis seemed to see the source of chaos accumulated in the chains of order. They are remnants of the beginning of creation, and they are not uncommon outside this world. But in places dominated by order, their existence itself makes the flow of laws much more difficult. Then Themis raised her right hand. In silence, the brass-colored ancient book that looked like jade but not jade, or stone but not stone opened its title page. On the bibliography originally inscribed with the calendar and the order of the spiritual world, new writing began to appear. As part of the agreement, she wrote it in spiritual script, so the part of the original spiritual script that was connected to the law was enhanced. The divine power in the body became more and more intense. As the words on the creation code appeared, chains of laws emerged from the void, rushing towards the artifact. During this process, not only did the chain of laws itself seem to be purified, but also traces of invisible power emerged and were quietly injected into the code, slowly increasing its power. The nature of this invisible power is extremely high, and with each additional trace, the aura of the artifact becomes more powerful and perfect. Themis knew that this was the attributelis source power transformed from chaos by chaos. In addition to the code of law as a medium, this source of power is also continuously poured into her body, turning it into a part of the law priesthood. Although Themis's divine power has not increased, her upper limit has been opened. The road to powerful divine power has been paved by her. 
So under the watchful eye of Cronus, and under the secret watch of the Lord of the Spirit World, the Goddess of Law held up the code, and declared to the laws of the world. I am the Lord of the God-given law of chaos, the ancient Titan God who was born great, the holder of the God-King's scepter, and the writer of the creation code. In the name of order, I am here to make a covenant for this world. Different from weak divine power and weak divine power, starting from medium divine power, gods can initially contact the source sea of the world. The priesthood is the manifestation of the source power. Except for the world itself and the great divine power, no intelligent being can have casual access to the source power itself, because this power that constitutes the essence of the world will only make their thinking gradually assimilate with it. In the words of Ryan's previous life, it is, transforming the Tao. Therefore, chaos created the priesthood, and Ryan created a multi-faceted crystal condensed by source power. Only by separating one layer can the gods freely exercise their authority. But just like a needle dropped into sea water, although the water cannot stop it, it can hardly cause damage to the water itself. When the divine power reaches the medium level, the gods no longer fear the source power, but can sense its rhythm to a certain extent, and even use this to deepen their understanding of the corresponding source. It is this kind of sensing ability that allows them to vaguely sense that at this moment, on Mount Otis, the laws of the world are converging, and gods are affecting the arrangement of the rules. Themis has walked the earth for thousands of years, and more than one god has witnessed her presence. The gods have long known what this goddess has done. But in their eyes, it is completely impossible for a being with moderate divine power to try to modify the rules. But now the shock coming from the source sea forced them to change their minds. Maybe this unknown ancient titan god is not arrogant, but really has some special method. And no matter what means Themis used, the gods knew very well that with the completion of the laws of the world, as the first promoter and executor of the law, her priesthood of the law would inevitably be promoted. Strong divine power, there is no doubt about it. Regardless of whether they are willing to admit it or not, the gods can only accept that another god who can influence the direction of the world is about to be born. It's Themis. She said last time that she would legislate for this world. I thought she was joking, but I didn't expect it to be true. On the sea, the original water goddess stood beside her husband and said with great certainty. If she can succeed in legislating for this world, the sublimated law priesthood will be enough to support her to touch the pinnacle of powerful divine power. It seems that another strong one will emerge from our generation of titans. Hearing this, Oceanus nodded. God Lord Diang is still happy to see his sister's promotion. Themis's priesthood determined that the other party would not interfere in the war between him and Pontos. After all, they were both sea gods, and their disputes were natural. Let's go, let's go together to congratulate her. After looking at it for a while, Oceanus looked back. Legislating for this world is not a matter of a day or two. Before it is completed, it will be enough for him to rush to Odier's mountain. I haven't been back for a long time, and I don't know how much the sacred mountain has changed from before. In the underworld, beside Etel, the god of light, his younger brothers and sisters gathered around him. Unlike the gods on the earth, the gods in the underworld are rare and weak. Except for the powerful goddess of day, only the god of destruction and the god of misfortune have the opportunity to become moderate gods in the future. In the eyes of outsiders, although they are not strong, with the support of the two ancient creation gods, all the gods have acquiesced in their special status. But only they themselves knew that the two primitive gods had never taken them seriously. Even the land of eternal night and the lightless realm kept a respectful distance from them. It's not that they can't get in, but like other gods, even they themselves don't know if they can come out again after entering. Kerr, I've warned you a long time ago not to cause trouble everywhere. The last time you went to the holy mountain, Cronus didn't care about you for the sake of his mother, but this is not a reason for you to act recklessly. No secret can be hidden forever. Sooner or later, they will know the truth of the matter. At that time, no one knows whether he will use us to establish the prestige of the god-king. After all, compared to his titan brothers, no one will stand up for us. Looking at her younger brother, Ethel was still a little angry even though she knew that Kerr was somewhat affected by the priesthood. Really, if that day comes, let him come to me. I think you will be fine. After all, aren't you going to show your loyalty to him? Kerr sneered, but Kerr didn't appreciate it. 
As a descendant of the ancient gods of creation, even if his parents in name do not recognize his existence, he still believes that he is a being on par with the ancient gods of Titan. In fact, gods like him are not uncommon in chaos. The gods are immortal, but that doesn't mean they are smart. You. On the side, Ethel pointed at his brother, but he didn't say anything in the end. Now, he fully understood why Hemera didn't want to be with them, because like she said, they were different. Skylight and Day are determined by the priesthood itself. The two of them are incompatible with the other six gods. I will go to the holy mountain to congratulate the Lord of the Law. As for you, if you don't want to go, just stay here. Shaking her head, Ethel threw up her sleeves and left. It's time for him to consider his sister's thoughts. Perhaps compared to the underworld, the starry sky is where they should stay. Shall we go there too, father? In the sky where Ethel was thinking, the moon goddess Selene looked at Hyperion. Although she has been around for hundreds of years, she is still a weak god. Like all gods, she has an appearance that is difficult for mortals in later generations to achieve. Moreover, the gods of this era are not like those of later generations. A weak but beautiful god like her is not worried about her situation. On the contrary, many gods expressed their affection to Selene, but she did not agree to any of them. Of course, Selene. Ryan shamelessly stole the concept of the moon, making you so weak. But when I tried to create a underworld sun in the underworld, I never succeeded. I don't know how he did it, but as the god of justice and law, your aunt will make the decision for you. Selene was a little silent. She had heard about the god who lived in the underworld many times from her father. His seizure of the concept of moon originated from the agreement with the Earth Mother and the Titans. She did not think that her aunt would violate her priesthood for her father. Just remembering her own strength, she still let it go. The current sun god family is different from the original one. Both the eldest son and the eldest daughter have weak divine power, but the originally weak goddess of dawn is stronger than her brothers and sisters. Helios is weak, at least because he has no chance to move the sun and increase his divine power, but his priesthood is still powerful. And Selene, she doesn't want to be weak forever. Maybe I can find a strong man to rely on. If my father didn't have a conflict with the god king, maybe he would be a good choice. Single quote. Thinking silently in her heart, Selene and her father flew towards the center of the earth. At the same time, similar scenes were playing out in many places. The higher the level of divine power of a god, the greater the gap between levels. A powerful god who is expected to reach level 18 or 9 will be a very important presence in chaos even in future generations. No matter what their thoughts were, no matter whether the relationship was friendly or not, the gods all left their palaces and flew towards Odile's mountain. So on this day, the god king calendar established by Cronus himself for 1,500 years, all the gods gathered together. The top of Odile's mountain. The sun and the moon alternate in the sky, and the oscillations of the source sea become more and more intensive. As time goes by, the number of gods around the sacred mountain gradually increases. Surrounding the sacred mountain, the positions of the gods are clearly distinguished. The Ocean God series, the Ancient Sea God series, the Mountain God series, and the Star God series, they are all separated in four directions, not connected to each other. As for the other gods, they stood scattered among them, which relieved the solemn atmosphere among the gods. Among the four major god systems, the Star God system has no conflicts with the world. They are located in the sky and worship the Sun God as their main god. There is no conflict with other god systems. The only celestial god with whom there may be a conflict is Kuz. He has only two children, and the star gods also treat him with great courtesy. But the remaining three pantheons are different. Faintly, the mountain god and the ancient sea god stood together, fighting against the gods of the ocean series. The conflict between the two sea gods has been around for a long time, and on earth, due to the increase in the number of river gods, lake gods, and spring gods, the conflicts between Oceanus and the mountain gods have also become intensive. So the two brothers Uriah and Pontos joined forces to face their nephew's growing god system. This is why Oceanus has never really made a move against his uncle even though he has two powerful powers. This is not only due to concerns about Earth Mother's attitude, but also because of Uriah's existence. And of course, there's Cronus on MT. 
Everyone knows that although the God King is forced to accept the status quo of the gods acting independently, he will not accept it forever. If the gods went to war and he was given this opportunity, he would do something. Several main gods of the Pantheon are well aware of this. In the slightly tense atmosphere of the gods, more than three months passed in a blink of an eye. The perfection of the code is gradually coming to an end. Around the goddess of law, the chains of laws are gathering visibly with the naked eye, closely connected with the increasingly profound, code of creation. Using her fingertips as brush strokes and source power as ink, under the gaze of the gods of chaos, Themis wrote the results of her millennia at will. At a certain moment, when she wrote the last character, time and space seemed to freeze for a moment. The area around the sacred mountain immediately fell into a strange calm, with only the sound of the pulling of the law chain remaining the same. In this special atmosphere, Themis was not affected. The legal regulations have been written, and there is only one final step left. She pressed her hand on the page of the brass book, and the artifact, which had grown taller than a person at some point, flashed, as if responding to the will of the goddess of law. Themis could feel that at this moment, she was infinitely close to Yuan Hai. Every word she speaks can be heard by the world. Only in the name of the supreme law of order, and under the witness of chaos, I hereby make a treaty with the world. Every time a person lives for a hundred days, a law is established, it takes effect at this moment and will be the same for all generations. The voice came out very softly, but when it really spread, the world of chaos seemed to be shaken. Immediately, the chain of order around Themis began to vibrate in an orderly manner, and streaks of grey mist from light to dark separated from the law. The mist gathers and disperses erratically, eventually forming the shape of a snake. They wander around the creation code, hissing and howling at it. The gods couldn't help but feel in their hearts. That is the remaining source of chaos in this world, the cancer left over from the beginning of the world. They are the placenta that gave birth to Tartarus, and are the core of those places beyond this world where the gods stop. The chaos source power left here is only less than 10% or 20% of the original, but it is enough to make any god fear it. Chaos is naturally hostile to order, so they surround the creation code. But the gap in strength made them instinctively stop moving forward. After all, the complete artifact of the Trinity is a creation that is truly equal to the great divine power. Even if it is not perfect yet, it cannot be resisted by these remaining sources of chaos. As time passed, the number of fog snakes around them gradually increased. When the last bit of sporadic gray fog overflowed, the law chain returned to calm. There was no hype, and there was no sudden surge in power, but everyone knew that the legislation had been successful. The origin of Themis's priesthood is the same as that of Cronus's divine kingship, both of which have been gradually improved in the past hundred days. All the gods can feel that although the divine power has not increased, the goddess of justice has opened the threshold to powerful divine power. The rest is just the accumulation of time. Congratulations, my sister, the gods should remember your feet. Around the sacred mountain, Oceanus was the first to express his congratulations. Although he did not dare to approach the sacred mountain due to the wandering mist snakes, his loud voice still spread far away. Congratulations, your highness Themis. Congratulations, it's my honor to witness your great achievements. Congratulations, your deeds today will be remembered forever in chaos. The voice of Lord Ocean seemed to remind the gods present, and celebrations sounded one after another. On the top of the sacred mountain, although Themis was very tired, she still cheered up and started chatting with the gods. After thousands of years of hard work, she felt the increase in the origin of the priesthood. Even the gods of the underworld who had never been accustomed to seeing her, Themis also gave a smile. Deception, lust, and other priesthoods are inherently in conflict with law, but since they were brought by the god of skylight and the goddess of day, Lady Justice reluctantly accepted their reluctant congratulations. But in her impression, there should be more than five gods in the underworld, and she didn't know what had delayed the rest. The congratulations of the gods kept ringing out, but Themis soon realized their embarrassing situation. After the legislation was over, the gods were supposed to come to the holy mountain, but due to the existence of the source of chaos here, including Cronus, they could only stand far away and did not dare to approach at all. Themis had no solution for this. She signaled to Cronus with her eyes that she was going to invite the gods to the palace behind Mount Odiles, where a celebration banquet had already been prepared. 
Congratulations, Lady Themis. Just as he was about to speak, a familiar voice came. The goddess of justice turned around in surprise. She originally thought that the other party would wait for the gods to disperse before coming. Wherever he looked, space fluctuations came, and a young god in black appeared quietly in front of him, as if the source of chaos posed no threat to him. Several powerful gods in the distance frowned. With their strength, they could only detect the arrival a moment in advance. They had only seen this level of space-time power in Cronus. It should be said, same joy, your highness Ryan. Smiling slightly, the goddess breathed a sigh of relief and pointed to the creation code beside her. Two hundred years overdue, it's time to return the property to its original owner. There are also these sources of chaos. If you don't come again, I don't know how to deal with them. Hearing this, many gods around who had never seen Ryan were curious about his identity and what it had to do with the goddess of law's artifact. The few who recognized Ryan's presence were also puzzled. The source of chaos is simply a poison to the gods born in this world. Ignoring the gods beside him, Ryan nodded to Themis. He stretched out his hand and the creation code immediately shrank and turned into the size of a normal book and fell into his palm. As soon as his fingers tapped on the spine of the book, a page fell from the artifact. A golden light flashed across the page, and the surrounding mist snakes immediately flowed into it like a whale sucking water, leaving no trace behind. Obviously, in the hands of the true owner of the artifact, it has shown more powerful power in the field of order. Do you want to stay and attend my celebration party? No, I'm just here to take away these things that you can't handle. I've been looking forward to the source of chaos for a long time. Shaking his head, Ryan rejected Themis's invitation. He had no interest in attending the banquets of this era. Once the things were in hand, Ryan was ready to say goodbye. But the next moment, an inexplicable sense of oppression suddenly came, making the surrounding space solidify. This level of confinement actually has little effect on him. As long as he uses a little more force, Ryan can easily break it. But he didn't do that. He just turned slightly and looked at the source of power. As expected, where he could see, the sun god family stood there. The leader is none other than the lord of the sun, Hyperion. As the sun god's unabashed divine power fluctuated, the originally lively atmosphere inside and outside the sacred mountain became solemn. The gods who were about to step forward also stopped. Although the, fog snake, had been eliminated, they were still unwilling to get involved in the obvious conflict in front of them. The character and ambition of the sun god are well known, and he has never been a sociable god. Except for his wife Thea, even his children feared him more than they respected him, so the gods naturally would not speak for him. Not to mention Ryan. Among the gods who knew him, most of them, except Themis, were happy to see someone take action against him. This god who is suspected to be older than the original god has never really taken action. Although the fate also makes the gods fear him, he always has no power to intuitively understand. Now that someone is willing to be the first person to test Ryan's strength, even the ancient mountain god Uriah can't help but want to watch the show. Is something wrong? Under the gaze of the gods, facing the faint divine pressure from Hyperion, Ryan asked unhurriedly. With a calm tone and a calm expression, Ryan's attitude was clearly revealed. He didn't take the sun god seriously at all, or so it seemed. You know what I'm here for, Ryan. I went to Hades to look for you, but you didn't even dare to see me. Squinting his eyes slightly, Hyperion responded with stronger divine power in response to Ryan's indifference. Light and heat emerged around Ryan and rushed towards him. But soon he discovered that although his divine power kept flowing, they all disappeared at the edge of Ryan's clothes. No, it's not disappearing. Hyperion can feel that the power of the sun is still there and continues to move forward. The distance that was only a finger's width seemed to be stretched tens of millions of times. No matter how close one's own strength was, it was always, just a little, away from the opponent. Faced with this situation, the sun god glanced at the watching god king with his peripheral vision. This method is very similar to the application of space authority, but in his impression, Cronus is the god of time and space. But this is not important anymore. When the power of the two parties is transferred, Ryan's medium-level divine power is very obvious to him. There was some threat, but it was no more than that, which made Hyperion's determination a little firmer. 
Ryan, you should know my purpose very well. Thousands of years ago, you used your words to confuse the God King and asked for three conditions, thereby shamelessly stealing the concept of moon. Today, I am here to correct this mistakes come. In front of the gods, Hyperion still has to speak some, reasons. Although all the ancient Titan gods who had actually experienced those years knew that he was in favor of it at that time. The sun god is very happy that Pluto's sun can expand his authority, and he has not yet gained freedom and does not know that the moon will become his daughter in the future. But obviously, Hades never appeared, Selene was born, and Hyperion's mind changed. On the other side, facing the sun god's question, Ryan remained unmoved. Since the last time the other party went to Hades, he had somewhat expected this day. The other party wanted the moon in his hand, so why didn't he want a chicken to deter the gods? If it were other titans, given the difference in divine power levels, Ryan might not have any good ideas. But Hyperion chose to attack here and now. It can only be said that he personally laid the foundation for his own disaster. Feeling the laws of the world that had not completely dispersed around him, Ryan did not reply, but turned to look at Cronus. Is this what you mean? The god king on the side was stunned for a moment when he heard this, and then decisively denied it. No, this matter has nothing to do with me. The god king's promise is never compromised. Although he really wanted to say, yes, and then take down Ryan with Hyperion to see if he could get his origin of time and space back. But after thinking about it, Cronus gave up the idea. Now that Hyperion has taken the initiative to jump out, he can completely decide what happens next. If Ryan is not as scary as he thinks, I believe that his god queen will definitely disobey the god king's order and take the initiative to do something that makes Cronus regretful. But if Ryan solves the problem caused by the sun god, he will never act rashly. Ryan, with a low drink, the sun god, who was ignored by Ryan, became angry again. He thought about many of the other party's reactions, such as refusing to hand over the concept of moon and leaving directly in some way, or telling the gods about past agreements and prophecies, criticizing his capriciousness, but Hyperion only do did not expect that the other party simply ignored his existence. He wanted to take action directly, but the previous unsuccessful attempt still allowed the sun god to regain some sense. He calmed down and turned to look at Cleos, the god of weather. As a result, he was relieved, and the, in-law, gave him a confirming look. Because of the, calendar, Cleos was somewhat dissatisfied with Ryan. It wouldn't be easy for him to take the initiative to stir up trouble, but he still dares to assist. Goddess of Justice, my sister Themis, this greedy god first stole Nemozine's memory, and then conspired to take away my daughter's, moon. I hope you can make a fair judgment and let he paid for his evil deeds. As if having a helper wasn't enough, Hyperion tried to get Themis on his side too. But obviously, the result was not what he thought. Gods and priests influence each other, at least among the native gods of chaos. No one but the former Heavenly Father could make the Lord of Justice and Law go against his own instincts. What's more, even from a personal emotional point of view, Themis would not hesitate for a moment between the friend who lent the artifact and the sun god whom she hadn't seen for a thousand years. The god of spirituality was born before us, and the ownership of memory is the decision of chaos. As for the moon, that is an agreement witnessed by the mother goddess and us. Shaking her head, Themis had no thoughts of favoritism for her brothers. She turned to look at Ryan. If the other party needs her help, she doesn't mind standing on the side of justice. She may not be a match for the sun god as her divine power has not yet been broken through, but she is still sure of stopping the uh, promise. He's just threatening us with a prophecy. With a sneer, Hyperion seemed to have forgotten how humble and embarrassed he was when the father was still there. As the leader of the star god lineage, he has long lost his past caution. Since you're not willing to help me, my sister, you'd better not stop me. Even if your priesthood has been improved, you are still not my opponent now. And you, Ryan, Hyperion looked over with a sneer, he was not going to endure it any longer. In the presence of the gods, I will tell you that power speaks louder than words. The next moment, the sky brightened. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.